34 wealth. That would be nice, Alice said taking the merchant's hand while taking the seat next to him. I haven't introduced myself yet, you can call me Sam. He said whipping the horses and starting the rest of the short distance back to the kingdom. It is nice to meet you Sam, I am Alice. She replied happy to be able to relax after a hard day's work. Arriving at a large building surrounded by stalls Joey took Jack out of the back and walked him inside to be brought in front of their boss. Come with me Miss Alice and I will take you to meet Master Hogan, Sam said offering her his hand as she got off the wagon. Walking up the stairs and facing large thick wooden doors Sam pushed them open and motioned for Joey to bring their prisoner inside with them. Walking across the large room Sam called out to his boss telling him he had great news with excitement. Is that one of the bandit brothers? Hogan said turning his chair around to face them. Yeah, and this little lady here is the ones responsible for his capture, the other brother was also killed due to her efforts. Sam said patting Alice on the shoulder with a smile. Looking at Alice and walking around his desk he held out his hand to shake hers, my name is Hogan, you have my thanks for completing the request. However I only see one brother where is the proof of the other? He said ask sitting on the edge of his desk. Pulling the sack out of her inventory she removed Logan's severed head and held it out for Hogan to take. Is this enough proof? Alice asked as Jack cured at her and tried to break free from his bindings. Picking up one of the pens on his desk Hogan swiftly threw it at Jack puncturing through his eye and into his brain killing him. The reason I wanted them alive was so that I could kill them myself. They're the reason my son is dead, Hogan said with a depressed face before turning back to Alice. You have done a great favor for me by saving one of them for me to get a small amount of vengeance Miss Alice, if there is anything you want just name it otherwise I can just give you one gold coin for the request and bonus reward. He said pulling out a large coin pouch taking out the golden coin. The money is enough, I already have enough items. I even received two axes that can cut through magic spells with ease. Alice said pulling out one of the axes to show him. If you wouldn't mind could you sell the both of them to me? Hogan said while inspecting the well-made axe. I don't mind I was planning on putting them up for auction but they don't have any use to me or any of my teammates. Alice said pulling the second one out and handing it to Hogan. Taking another gold coin and a handful of silver out he placed them into a coin pouch and handed it to Alice. If you ever come across items like this again please bring them to me. I will happily purchase them for a fair price. Hogan said while writing a letter of completion for her to turn into the guild. Sure, I need to be going now to turn in my other requests though, she said before giving a smile and leaving his business. Looking through some of the stalls next to Hogan's business Alice decided to buy more MP potions before heading to the Adventures Guild. Walking slowly through the street looking at more stalls and buying some sweets to eat she saw everyone from her party. What's going on, what are you all up to? Alice asked finishing a cookie she was eating. Hey, Alice, we were just discussing going to the Guild Tavern to talk about our upcoming dungeon. Would you like to join us? Eric replied. Sure, I was headed there to turn in some requests anyway. She said while walking with them the rest of the way to the guild. Entering the Adventures Guild she parted ways with her party and went to the receptionist to turn in the requests she had completed. Handing the middle-aged men the request flyers and proof of completions Alice waited for them to be processed. For completing the Red Serpent Vines request the reward is 80 silver, as for Jocker's request the reward is 115 silver. Remember to let us know if there are any other requests you with to take. He said while handing her a pouch full of silver coins. Walking over to join the party Alice took her seat next to Yumi who was happy to see Alice again after her being gone all day. How did your requests go? Yumi asked while waiting for Eric to get back with the information on the dungeon. I managed to level up again and I got a lot of benefits from them. Alice said pulling a very large bag full of silver coins out of her inventory that she took from the Bandit Brothers camp. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates, better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. Oh my gosh Alice. Yuki said looking over curiously, how on earth did you earn all of that in a day? She continued to ask. I killed the Bandit Brothers and got to keep everything I took from their camp. I even sold a man named Hogan two axes that can cut through magic spells for some gold coin. Alice said happily knowing she made a small fortune. Do you even need the allowance the king gave you? Yumi said curious just how much money Alice really had. Well I figured I can use the king's money to help us buy potions and camping gear for our dungeon runs. Alice replied while pulling out some potions and camping gear she had purchased for everyone to share. Looks like Alice has done the shopping for us. Eric said returning to the table with some beers and a stack of papers. 
Well in any case I have the information about our next dungeon, this one will be a little higher level and will take roughly 4 days to complete. He said taking his seat and passing out the beer before reading from the papers. The dungeon is called Lair of the Satora from the information provided the last boss is a monster called the Satora. He resembles a large monkey that has the power to read minds, his level should be around 22 and his weapon changes from a club to a staff. Once his HP gets below a certain point he will begin using magic attacks while reading our minds to know our next moves. The information also states that this dungeon has four floors and the terrain is consistently forest-like while having different seasons on each floor. Eric read from the paper while drinking his beer. Does it say anything about the average level of the mob monsters? Alex asked already borderline drunk. Take it easy on the drinking Alex you still have to wake up in the morning. Yes the average level for the first floor should be 18, increasing by one level for each floor as for the mob monsters they should all be monkeys. Once we reach the third floor some of the mob monsters should have some basic magic attacks they will use so we will have to be prepared to defend against them. Eric said putting the papers away and asked if anyone had questions. With no one having any questions Eric told everyone to meet him back at the tavern at sunrise the next day. Hey Yumi is there a auction tonight by chance? Alice asked wanting to spend some of her new found wealth. Yeah there should be, want me to go with you? Yumi asked as she finished her drink. No, I can handle it this time, mind if I use the VIP booth though? Alice asked not wanting to admit she got used to living with luxury. That should be fine, just show this token to the receptionist, Yumi said tossing Alice a large bronze badge with her family crest on it. Catching the token Alice looked at the crest seeing a large wolf with a small crown and money around it. Well I guess I am not too surprised that the family crest shows their wealth, she thought as she walked to the auction hall. Are you here to purchase to sell? The auction hall receptionist asked while sitting behind the counter. Bye, she said as she showed him the crest and continued to walk in towards the stairs. Finding the Astala VIP room Alice sat down in a large comfy chair overlooking the seats and stage below. Hearing a knock at the door Alice turned to see a man in his early twenties open the door. His slim but healthy figure and washed blonde hair let her know he was probably another VIP. Can I do anything for you sir? She asked curious who the man was and why he was at the Astala VIP room. Sorry to intrude but my name is Jesse Vaughn, I noticed you come here alone and was curious if you would mind sharing a VIP room with me. These auctions can be pretty boring at times as I am sure you are aware. Jesse said while taking a step into the room with Alice. I don't really mind, my name is Alice. She said while turning her attention back to the stage waiting for things to get started. You do not strike me as a member of the Astala family Alice, could you be a close friend to the family? He asked sitting in the chair next to her. I currently live at the estate and Yumi is my best friend as well as party member, and what of you? How is it you know the Astala family? Alice asked figuring talking would pass the time faster until the auction started. Our families are business rivals to be honest. I don't really have much to do with any of it other than spending my father money to get back at him for ignoring my mother and I. Jesse said surprising Alice a little. Would you not get in trouble with your father for being seen in the Astala VIP booth? She asked now looking at him. It isn't like I really care to be scolded by father, if he paid enough attention to me to actually scold me I would have to thank you for letting me in this room. He said while turning his attention to the stage as the auctioneer started the auction. 4. Our first item tonight we have a magical beast egg. The beast should be a eagle when hatched from its egg we are starting the bid at 200 silver? The man said loudly as a bidding frenzy started off going from 200 silver to over 1 gold in the matter of second with Jesse winning the bid. They really started things off with a good item this time around, Jesse said happy to have a magical beast. They are very nice to have, I personally have one and he is now the same as a family member to me. Alice said finding it easy to get along with Jesse. The Next item up for today is a captured fairy. You heard me right we have a fairy up for auction the starting bid will be 250 silver, he said while taking bids rapidly. Seeing the fairy she saw this as her chance to get use from the ring and yelled out one gold coin topping the previous highest bidder of 780 silver. It seems someone from the Astala household wishes to purchase the fairy, will anyone top the bid? The auctioneer yelled out trying to increase the bid. After someone stood to bid looking Alice's way to taunt her into wasting all her money she used her demonic gaze skill causing the man to pause long enough to lose the bid. Sold to the Astala household? He said with a smile knowing what Alice did but not doing anything about it. It seems you have obtained a very valuable item Alice, Jessie said giving her a smile. Same to you Jessie, 
I got what I wanted so I shall take my leave now. Alice said as she waved and left the room to go pay the money and get the ferry. 35 favor of the ferry. I am here to pay for and pick up the ferry I just won. Alice said as she pulled out her money to hand to the man at the counter. Follow. Me please, he said as he lead Alice into a back room with other monsters in reinforced cages. Looking around she saw some pretty unique monsters and even some that had intelligence. Seeing. How the purchase was above the amount we expected we are offering to preform a free slave contract for you. Once the contract is complete you should be able to communicate with the fairy and give it commands. He said while taking the cloth off the top of the bird cage showing the fairy sitting with her hands between her legs and her head hung low. I won't need that. I will take the cage and be on my way. Alice said picking up the cage with the fairy and headed back to the Astala estate. While walking through the street she raised the cage a little so the fairy could hear her as she said in the angel language, I do not want to harm you or enslave you wait until we get to my home and we can talk when I free you. Hearing Alice's words the fairy fluttered her wings and looked at Alice with a shocked expression, even as a fairy she still knew the angels were eradicated. She never imagined she would hear the angel language again. Entering her room Alice gently set the cage down on a table and slowly opened the door letting the fairy out of her prison. Seeing Alice keep her word the fairy hovered in front of Alice giving her a deep bow showing her thanks before they started talking in the angel language. Thank you for freeing me, I thought I would end up as materials or worse a slave I do not know how to repay you. My name is Lillian, she said not believing she escaped slavery so narrowly. I am Alice, it is nice to meet you Lillian. You have probably guessed by now but I am part of the angel race. Are you the one the prophecy spoke of? Yes. God has given me a mission to revive the angel race and I want to complete it. It has been so long since I have talked with the angel, I wish you success on your quest. Now that angels are gone the fairy race is being hunted down to no end our only safe place is the ruined angel kingdom. Lillian said lowering herself and sitting on Alice's hands. I will bring the angels back and protect the fairy people don't worry, she said while gently wiping away a tear from Lillian. I am so happy to hear that. The only thing I can give you is my blessing as a fairy elder, it will give you the ability to use items we fairies have enchanted. It is not much but it is all I can offer you as my savior, she said while flying up and putting her forehead against Alice's and chanting letting out a soft warm glow as Alice felt her body get a massive surge of mana due to the fairy ring stats being unlocked. Name, Alice class, fallen demi angel title, hunter hp, 580-580, 605-605, mp. 635 slash 635, 1 comma 660 slash 1 comma 660, level, 17 str, 80 plus 10 vit, 78 plus 5 int, 110, plus 5 plus 200, dax, 40, plus 10 plus 5, def, 60, plus 5 plus 10 plus 10, find authorized novels in web novel faster updates, better experience please click www.webnovel.com for, visiting, agi, 50, Plus 5 plus 10, skill points, 0 skills, familiar telepathy, blessed by God, passive, demonic gaze, God's eye, passive, ring of the fairy king effect, plus 200 int, loved by nature, plus 20% MP regeneration in forests, upon seeing her new instat she couldn't help but look at the ring she bought for 300 silver, if she had to guess the true value it would probably be close to a nation treasure. Noticing that Alice possessed the previous fairy king's ring, Lillian gave her a smile before giving the ring on Alice's finger a small bow of respect for the departed king. I believe that fate has brought us together today, now that you have my blessing and that ring when you're in a forest fairies will not fear you and may come out of hiding to speak with you. You will not have to hide your identity from any of us. I have a request that you take me to the forest safely so I can be reunited with my family if you don't mind though, Lillian said sitting on Alice's shoulder. I can do that. I will be going to the forest in the morning with my party to conquer a dungeon. You can ride on Little Shadow and he will take you quietly away from my party so you can leave safely without being seen. She said while laying back as Lillian flew to sit on her head. The two talked for hours about flying and angels and how the world has changed in the last 50 plus years up till the point Alice was reincarnated. Waking up Alice put Lillian safely away in her bag as she met with Yumi before heading out to meet the rest of the party at the tavern to eat breakfast before going to the dungeon. Hey. Eric, you're here early, Yumi said taking a seat next to him while they waited on Josh and the others to arrive. Yeah, Josh and the others are on their way and then we will set out. 
He said while eating some eggs and drinking coffee underscore 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 and entered the forest Alice put Lillian on little shadow and sent her on her way while they continued deeper in the forest to the dungeon entrance. Coming into a clearing they saw the entrance of the dungeon called Lair of the Satori, checking all their equipment Alice and the others gave Eric a nod letting him know they are ready to begin the dungeon. Point one by one the party entered the dungeon, being blinded by the light as the group entered the first floor of Lair of the Satori, letting their eyes adjust they were met with the sight of a thick forest and a bright sunny sky, okay everyone be on guard, we have no idea if they will attack from the tops of the trees or not. Eric said bringing his shield up as he started walking into the forest. Hearing the distant taunts of the monkey-like monsters the group kept their eyes on the lookout while searching for any sign of movement. Above us, Alex yelled out as he sent a magic attack blasting into the trees. Yelling out using his war cry skill Eric called the aggro of the nearby monsters who dropped from the treetops to attack them. Yumi who was not able to take advantage of her main weapon pulled out a short sword and started attack the nearest monster while Alice used her scythe infusing it with her shadow element allowing her to swing through the trees and still attack the monkeys dealing large amounts of damage. Yuki who was comfortable with her surroundings shielded the party with her earth spells from projectiles being thrown at them from the tops of trees while Alex would send out blasts of water knocking monsters. Off the trees. Little Shadow would run through the trees quickly taking chunks out of the necks of the monsters who fell hitting the forest floor adding to the damage making them easier to kill. Josh had no issues keeping the monkeys off of Eric's back while healing and buffing as the party needed it. Clearing the first mob they decided to keep moving not wanting to lose any momentum. Killing mob after mob they came across another clearing showing a staircase that seemed to have half of it vanish in a portal leading into the next floor. We ended up making really good time for this floor. The terrain seems to work in our favor. Eric said with a smile as he saw his party was ready to go to the next floor. If you two need to rest and regain some mana then I can take over for a while since I still have plenty of mana to use. Alice said not telling the party her mana pool grew by a thousand and her mana regeneration in this terrain could keep her going for a long time thanks to her passive and ring a secret for now. Drinking some mana potions both Alex and Yuki thanked Alice but decided to refuse her offer. Off to the next floor we go. Yumi said as she ran up to the stairs waiting on the others to catch up. Being met with another forest they were surprised to see snow cover the whole forest and the temperature drop quite a bit from the last floor. I will use my fire element to help keep everyone warm, Alice said as she warmed the mana around her acting as a human heater for the people around her causing Yumi to stick quite a bit closer to her than normal. Giving Alice their thanks they entered the snowy forest and continued their routine while sticking closer to Alice so they wouldn't freeze. Amazing my mana regenerates almost as fast as it drains in the forest, Alice though as she sent fireballs flying at monsters with every swing of her scythe, something she learned how to do while continually using her fire element to keep the party warm as she attacked monsters. Fortunately due to her fire attacks, she was able to kill the mobs with ease since they had a weakness to fire based attacks making things easier for the rest of the party as she could transition from close range to Long range attacks when needed. Only moving slower through this floor due to the thick snow, the party still managed to make good time killing the mobs that tried to stand in their way. Alice, do you think you could send a few fireballs in front of us to melt the snow in our path? Eric asked, curious if she could also make moving through the forest easier. Raising her hand and forming a few glowing red magic circles, she let loose fireball after fireball hitting the ground further in front of them, clearing a path. Thanks, Alice. Eric said before the party started to follow the path she made for them. Suddenly, the party was met with large amounts of rocks being thrown at them from the trees. Jumping in front of the party, Yuki made a huge earth shield to protect them from taking unnecessary damage from the larger mob. Letting out his war cry, Eric gained all of the monsters' aggro as he blocked the onslaught of attacks being thrown at him, giving the mages time to knock them off the tree branches. Yumi who moved closer to Eric made a earth shield to cover the top of his head so he could focus on tanking the monsters who fell from the trees that charged at him. Alice took full advantage of her newfound mana pool and used her shadow spells to effortlessly move from tree to tree knocking down a large amount of the monsters in a short amount of time before standing behind the mob and launching as many fireballs at their backs as she could. Managing to kill monsters with ease Alice worked on controlling the mob so they could not go around to attack Yuki and Alex. Killing the last few monsters the party decided to walk the rest of the way to the entrance of the third floor before setting up camp to take a rest before continuing their journey. 
I think we all managed to level up so be sure to get a rest and eat a good meal before we continue the mobs on the third floor can use basic magic so we need to be at our best to defend against their attacks. Eric said pulling out a bag full of jerky and eating it before he set up his tent. 36 Abyss Vines Packing their gear up the party prepared themselves for the next floor by doing some stretches after a long rest. Climbing the stairs they slowly made their way into the third floor hoping that it would be warmer than the previous one. Hearing a loud boom in the sky the party was met with a dimly lit forest that barely protected them from the downpour of rain. This sucks, not only is visibility low but we have to spend who knows how long being cold and wet. Yuki said while doing her best to stay as dry as she can. While it is not an ideal environment we still need to be careful since the mobs can use magic on this floor so try not to lower your guard. Eric said holding his shield over his head to keep the water out of his eyes. Little shadow and I can go scout for the locations of the mobs, with our speed and my shadow element we should be safe going out alone if we don't stop to fight. Alice said to Eric wanting to help lighten the burden of this floor. Yeah, just be sure not to engage with the mobs or bring them back to us. Eric replied standing under the small cover Yuki had built for the party. Giving a nod both Alice and Shadow sped off into the forest to locate the mobs as best they could. Leaping from tree to tree as fast as she would she quickly made her way through the forest making mental notes of the mobs she passed along the way. Quickly dodging to the right she managed to dodge a blast of fire hitting the tree next to where she was standing. Shadow make sure you are not followed and head back to the party, Alice instructed as she sank into a shadow to move closer to the party without being seen by the monster that attacked her. That was pretty quick did you see any of the mobs? Eric said seeing her come out of a shadow net to them. Yeah, I was attacked by one of them further out but I made sure to use my shadow element to escape without being seen. Alice said taking some shelter to warm up by a fire they managed to start Alice, one of the closer mobs spotted me and is following me, I need help. Little Shadow said urgently. We need to move Little Shadow is being followed by one of the mobs closest to us and is in trouble. Alice said leading the party towards Little Shadow. Quickly darting behind the party safely Little Shadow climbed a tree waiting for his moment to attack while Alice and the others fought the mobs. Gaining aggro Eric made use of his fire element giving Alice quite the surprise, thanks to God's eye she knew he had a decent amount of mana for his level but she didn't know he could use the fire element. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates, better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. Sending small fireballs out to help the party see better in the dark, seeing his mana go down at a quick pace she called out, Eric, I will take over with using the fire element you save your mana? Infusing her scythe with her fire element Alice's blade caught fire making it look like streaks of red were left behind after every swing. With visibility slightly better than before the group managed to fend off the magic attacks being sent their way while taking the mob down one monster at a time. Killing the last monster of the first mob the group sat in another shelter to discuss a battle plan to make things go a little smoother. Alice, as long as you can keep a fireball going without launching it at an enemy I think we will have just enough light to see the mob monsters lurking in the trees. Yuki we will need you to use your earth element to protect us from the magic attacks while Yumi and Alex attack the monsters still in the trees to knock them down. Josh and I will tank as much as we can while Alice keeps the mobs from getting to anyone other than Josh and I. Eric said forming a battle formation for the party. Sounds like a good plan to me, Yumi said understanding what her role was for this floor. I also have no objections, Yuki and Alex said together. Having a solid plan of action the party follows Alice and Little Shadow to the location of the next mob. While walking she pulled out her grimoire and looked for more crowd control type spells to help with this kind of situation. Seeing the book stop flipping on a spell called Abyss Vines she raised an eyebrow reading the spell to herself. Using 200 MP the spellcaster will place their hands on the ground in a place with trees or vines. The spellcaster will take control of 5 black vines that pull the target, S to the place the spell has been cast rooting the target, S, in place for 30 seconds. 1000 mana can be used to use the upgraded spell Vines of the Shadow Monarch Vines of the Shadow Monarch is activated the same way as Abyss Vines but will allow the caster to control 25 vines pulling the target, S, to specified potion draining 20 MP per second from target, S, dot almost tripping while reading the skill Alice settled with only using the Abyss Vines spell when she needed not wanting to waste over half her MP just to use a single spell. Successfully learning her new spell she started to wonder about the term Shadow Monarch wondering how many more spells have an upgraded version to them. I will have to read more of the grimoire when I get a chance, 
Alice thought to herself as the party arrived at the next mob location. Jumping into their formation, Alice conjured up a large fireball above the party, giving them enough light to see the monsters hiding on tree limbs. Alex and Yumi went to work knocking the monsters off the trees while Yuki defended against the magic attacks being sent their way using her earth element to block and destroy the attacks before they got close to Eric who had used war cry to get their attention. Placing her hands on the ground she activated her new spell feeling the mana rush from her body to the ground as a small shadow slowly spread from her hands. Suddenly five large black vines rushed out in all directions pulling monsters from treetops and the surrounding area pulling the monies quickly to the center wrapping around the monsters and rooting them in place. Swinging her scythe at neck level she managed to decapitate all five monsters in one attack causing the rest of the party to slow down due to shock at the sudden new spell. What? The hell was that Alice? Yumi shouted wanting to know where that spell came from and why she didn't use it sooner. I did some reading on the walk over here and wanted to try something new out but it takes a lot of mana, she replied looking at her renaming mana.name, Alice class, Demi Angel title, Hunter HP 583-605 MP 1,233-1,660 smiling due to the fact she still had over 1000 MP even with keeping the fireball going and using her new spell she continued to attack the mob mercilessly. Finishing up the second mob and taking another short rest Alice was amazed seeing her mana regenerate at alarming speed. Almost having all of her mana back in a few moments. How much mana does a spell like that even cost? Yuki said also getting Alex's attention as he wanted to know as well. It costs 200 mana to use the spell, there is also a upgraded version called Vines of the Shadow Monarch that costs 1000 mana to activate but it also drains 20 mana per second from up to 25 targets. Alice replied with a bragging tone and a smile. That's just insane? Alex yelled out not believing her words. Even a level 40 mage has barely over 1000 mana? He continued to say in shock. Well. It isn't like I can use that skill yet you know, Alice said lying knowing she could use the spell if she wanted to. I guess that is true, it would be crazy for someone who isn't even level 40 to have that much mana. Yuki said as the party continued their talk while walking to the next destination. Following their new battle formation the party made quick work of the next few mobs as they reached the entrance to the last floor of the dungeon. Well thanks to our ability to work as a team we made really good time despite the rain and lack of light at the beginning. Eric said while pulling out some more food to eat. Yeah, we should probably head to the last floor after we get some rest, Josh said pulling out his tent while Yuki shielded the party from the constant rain. Laying down in her own tent Alice decided to level up after gaining enough experience to get the system notification after killing the last few monster of the floor. Name, Alice class, fallen demi angel title, hunter HP, 610 slash 610 MP, 1 comma 715 slash 1 comma 715 level. 1718 str 80 90 plus 10 vit 78 plus 5 int 110 120 plus 5 plus 200 dex 40 45 plus 10 plus 5 def 60 plus 5 plus 10 plus 10 agi 50 55 plus 5 plus 10 skill points 30 zero skills familiar telepathy blessed by god passive demonic gaze god's eye passive Feeling the rush of power again she smiled before closing her eyes and falling asleep even though she didn't need to. Little Shadow on the other hand laid beside Alice while feeling the same rush again after having leveled up quite a few times in the dungeon. Little Shadow level 16 HP 340-340 MP 670-670 skill, Devour. Fear, lets out a primal growl causing enemies to feel a sense of fear. Underscore 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 on up to the sounds of everyone packing their gear Alice woke little shadow up and did the same before joining them next to the entrance to the last floor. Alright everyone we will see what the plan of action is once we enter the last floor so be prepared for the worst. Eric said leading the way. Coming into a clearing, the group saw that the forest was not as thick as before and the sky was sunny and clear. Thankfully, we have good weather on this floor, Yumi said, taking a deep breath of fresh air. It is pretty weird that we can basically see through the forest to where the boss is, though, Alice said, pointing in the direction of the boss. We can't see that far, Yumi said, looking in the direction Alice was pointing. Oh, well, I am certain the boss is that way, Alice said, seeing a large beast far out through the trees. Let's. Go then, Eric said trusting Alice's words and leading the way through the loosely wooded forest. 
keeping an eye out for possible mobs they were suspicious when they couldn't see any signs of mobs that slowly walking forward they were able to see the boss of the fourth floor satora level 22 boss hp 43,000 slash 43,000 mp 60,000 slash 60,000 skills mind manipulation mind reading illusion Chain Lightning whispering to the party Eric instructed that they stay spread out due to the Chain Lightning spell the Satora had not wanting his whole team to get stunned or killed in one go. Taking his instructions, the party spread out in the forest before rushing out on different sides of the boss to take it by surprise. Using his war cry skill Eric blocked the first attack being sent back a few feet before being healed by Josh. Seeing them spread out the boss used his spell mind manipulation to confuse Yuki into seeing Josh as the Satora. Turning her attention at Josh she raised her hands and started to cast earth spikes in hopes of dealing massive damage to the boss not knowing she was attacking her own teammate and friend. 37 Battle with the Satori. Seeing Yuki aiming her spell at Josh, Alex sent a water ball crashing into Josh's back sending him forward enough to avoid death as one of the spikes impaled his leg. Yelling out in pain Alice took the initiative to guard Josh so he could have time to heal himself. Yelling out for Yumi to restrain Yuki Eric did everything in his power to hold aggro and keep Satora's attention. Swinging the disc end of her weapon Yumi wrapped Yuki tight with her chain preventing her from attacking Josh any further as he began to heal himself. Alice, start doing as much damage as you can. Eric called out trying to keep control of the situation. Not needing to be told twice she sent a few wind blades flying towards the Satori as she positioned herself behind the boss while changing from long range to close range attacks. Slicing away at the thick skin of the massive beast she danced circles around it while cuts started to visibly appear. Changing to the fire element she swung harder with each attack dealing even more damage until Eric no longer had aggro of the Satori. Unaware of having the Satori's full attention. She kept attacking until she saw its club headed right at her head. Ducking as quick as she could Alice dodged the strike while using Rift Warp to put some distance between her and the boss. Glaring at she could tell he was about to use a magic attack when he threw his club at her and pulled a staff out of the ground. Alice run? Eric yelled only to see her already running towards a shadow by a tree to try to escape. Zizske. Boom jumping into the shadow she was hit in the back with the Satora's chain lightning attack causing her to be stunned while in the rift. Coming back from her disabled state she looked at her status to see just how much damage she took from that attack. Name Alice class, Demi Angel title, Hunter HP 402 slash 610 MP 582 slash 1715 level, 18 STR, 90 plus 10 VIT, 78 plus 5 int, 120, plus 5 plus 200, Dex, 45, plus 10 plus 5, Def 60, plus 5 plus 10 plus 10, AGI 55, plus 5 plus 10, Skill Points, 0 Skills, Familiar Telepathy, Blessed by God, Passive, Demonic Gaze, God's Eye, Passive, Seeing that her MP was draining by the second and that her HP was lower than she thought it would be she made the choice to exit the rift behind a tree behind where the Satora should be. Giving herself some time to recover her HP and MP with her passive she rushed back towards the Satora only to see that the group was busy fighting each other. Placing her hands on the ground she used her Abyss Vine spell on her teammates to hold them in place so they couldn't kill each other. Launching a few fireballs at the Satora to get the boss's aggro she turned his attention away from the rest of the party as she dodged attacks and did her best to attack when she could. Rift warping beside the boss she infused her scythe with the shadow element and lodged it into the Satora's body causing it to take damage every second. Leaping back end. Leaving her weapon inside the boss she narrowly avoided being grabbed by the boss. Having some room to breath she charged up a large fireball and launched it at the boss's chest. Not being able to move very quick due to the weapon stuck in his body the boss had no other choice than to take her attack head on Satora level 22 boss HP 18,111-43,000 find authorized novels in web novel faster updates, better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. MP38,000 slash 60,000 taking out a spare sword she had in her inventory she continued with her attacks frowning at the lack of damage the sword has compared to her scythe. Seeing the Satora's staff crackle with lightning at the top she knew he was about to let out another attack. Using Rift Warp to get out of his sight this time she dodged the attack then rushed back to continue attacking the boss. Hearing Eric call out that they were back to normal she released them from her Abyss Binds spell and backed off a little letting Eric try to take aggro again. Seeing Eric fail to take aggro no matter what he did she realized that her scythe was slowly killing the Satori causing her to maintain aggro. 
Launching a fireball at his face she quickly withdrew her sad from the Satora's body ending the damage over time effect she had figured out she could do in the last dungeon dot taking her scythe and disappearing from sight long enough for Eric to resume his role as the tank she regained some more mana before trying to use the abyss vine spell on the boss so they could finish him off dot placing her hands on the ground she activated the spell as the vines shot out of the ground wrapping themselves around the Satori. Becoming enraged the Satori broke through her spell and turned his attention towards Alice again shit Alice thought to herself before using her demonic gaze skill to cause the Satori to pause, yelling out sit. She took advantage of Satori's state and slammed the back of her scythe against his face causing him to fall on his ass title quest, Queen Two Fifths seeing the display she grinned as she was one step closer before getting her new title which she really wanted. Attacking together the party chipped away at the last remaining amount of HP the Satori had left before finally killing him. Well we had a few close calls but no one died so we can call this a good dungeon run, Alex said, stretching. Thank you for tying us down when we were being manipulated Alice, Eric said knowing that she is the main reason no one got killed during this fight. Don't mention it, you guys saved my life it's the least I can do. She replied with a smile sitting on top of Satora's dead body kicking her legs back and forth dot looting the surrounding of whatever they could including the Satora's staff they party started heading towards the exit completing the dungeon. You. Guys head back and turn everything in first. I want to see if I can't find any monsters around for me to fight. I feel like I am close to leveling up again. Alice said while running off into the forest with Little Shadow by her side I am close to leveling up again as well, Little Shadow said while keeping pace with her. I guess we will both be leveling up again? Alice said hearing the good news dot killing small monsters in the forest they too kept going further into the forest while looking for something strong to kill so they could finish leveling up. Just when Alice thought of giving up looking and heading back to the kingdom to she spotted a large beast in the distance wind lion level 20 seeing that the beast has a specific element she wondered if it was capable of long range attacks. What do you think? Should we take this beast on? Alice asked her companion Little Shadow wanting to know what he thought it might be a tough battle seeing how he has an element but I believe with the two of us we can probably kill him. Little Shadow replied waiting for Alice to make her move so he could follow Dut pulling out her scythe she waited until the beast had its back turned before she used her rift warp to sneak up behind it to land the first attack Dut successfully managing to land the first strike she jumped back and fired off a fireball quickly to add to the damage she just dealt. Turning around and getting hit in the face with a fireball the beast let out a loud roar before rushing at Alice dot seeing the wind swirl around the lion's paws Alice sank into a shadow avoiding being hit as little shadow jumped on top of the distracted lion and used devour to take more of his HP away. Turning and swiping its large paw at little shadow the lions unknowingly turned his back to Alice again letting her get another heavy attack in dot infusing the fire element in her side she sent small fireballs toward the lion. Not wanting to be hit anymore by her annoying attacks the lion dodged and jumped back giving Alice the distance she wanted. Having already prepared a larger fireball she launched it at the lion before using rift warp to appear next to the lion attacking him before the fireball hit forcing the lion to take one attack of the other. Choosing to take the fireball's attack not expecting it to be stronger than the previous ones he howled in pain as the attack crashed into his ribcage exploding. On impact causing serious burns. Here kitty kitty. Alice said yet again further away with a taunting finger motion. Mad and at half HP the lion knew he could not defeat his opponent and tried to run away. Seeing the lion running away at a fast pace she used every ounce of agility she had to catch up and launch more attacks at the lion. Seeing that running was useless the lion turned towards Alice sliding to a halt before letting out another howl. Covering his body with a small barrier of wind he charged at he again this time with more speed. Not having the time to think Alice jumped up as high as she could while watching the lion crash through a tree knocking it over and turning to see her. Seems like you decided to play seriously, she said while falling back to the ground. Seeing the lion distracted again little shadow tried to use devour again only to be sent flying to the side because of the lion's wind barrier. Seeing this Alice wondered if her attacks with her scythe would even damage the monster. Spinning before she landed she swung hard with her weapon only to see it stop at the barrier a hair away from hitting the lion. Taking his chance the lion pushed forward landing. A hit on Alice sending her flying back a few feet while red lines slowly appeared across her stomach letting blood flow out. Jumping into a tree and sending more fireballs at the lion she pulled out a potion and drank it letting her wounds slowly close. I guess I will try my new spell out on you since no one can see me. 
Alice yelled out angrily having taken over 300 damage from that one attack. Landing on the ground she slammed her palms on the dirt and yelled out vines of the shadow monarch. Almost as soon as she said it she felt a large amount of mana rush out of her body and into the ground as large portion of the surrounding turned black and large tentacle-like vines shot out of the ground around them flying at the lion. Grabbing onto the lion and lifting him into the air before dragging him forcefully to where Alice was the lion was completely wrapped in the vines unable to move. Looking at her mana increase at a rapid pace due to all 25 vines latching onto the same target the spell disappeared in a black mist showing the dead body of the lion. What? The heck I couldn't even attack it just drained him dry. Alice said to herself looking at the shriveled up body of the lion and then back at her mana which was almost back to full title acquired. Apprentice of NYX using the shadows to kill an enemy without mercy NYX has given you her blessing plus 25% efficiency with the shadow element. Shadow Eye, allows you to see in the dark just as one can during day, plus 20 skill points per level up who is NYX, this title bonus is just crazy, Alice said before seeing that she also gained a level after killing the lion. Pulling up the status window she was happy to see she really did get 20 extra points to level up with. Name Alice class, Demi Angel title, Hunter, Apprentice of NYX HP 665-665 MP 1820-1820 level, 1819 STR. 9110 plus 10 VIT, 7888 plus 5 int, 120 140, plus 5 plus 200, DAX, 45, plus 10 plus 5, DEF 60, plus 5 plus 10 plus 10, AGI 55, plus 5 plus 10, skill points, 50 skills, familiar telepathy, blessed by God, passive, demonic gaze, God's eye, passive, shadow, I, passive, 38 demon thria. Heading back to the kingdom Alice and Little Shadow chatted about her life as an angel while Rhi recalled memories of her family and friends. I would have liked to meet your family. Once you bring the angel race back I am sure you will create a family of your own. Little Shadow said rubbing against Alice's leg as they walked. Reaching down and petting Shadow a little they picked up their pace to reach their home before the sun went down. Hey, you me I am back I managed to reach level 19. Alice said walking though the front doors of the estate seeing Yumi sitting on the stairs while talking with one of the maids. That's amazing, you will overtake me in level in no time at this rate. Yumi said with a smile. Yeah, so did Eric say when we are going back out? Alice asked eager to keep leveling. He said he needs some time to get better gear and relax while spending time with his family so it may take a few weeks before we go back out. Yumi replied. Alice you should also know that my father received word that two people from the demon kingdom visited the kingdom of Rudham. A few people died and the rumor is they were asking on information about you. Two of your previous party members died at their hands. The kingdom is building up an army to retaliate and they also are trying to find information about you. She continued to say with a serious expression. Is there a chance that the demons will come to this kingdom? Alice asked kind of worried. We still don't know. But the king is hiring high-leveled adventures and plans to make them stand guard at the kingdom gates for the next few days. Yumi replied not knowing what else to do other than tell Alice. Alice, would you mind coming with me to the castle in the morning? The king wishes to have a talk with you. Erida said while coming down the stairs. That should not be a issue. Alice replied wondering what the king will have to say about this matter. Thank you. You girls should head off to bed. Tomorrow will be a little busy for Alice and myself. Erida said while motioning for the maid to follow him again. I guess I will have an early morning tomorrow, good night Yumi, Alice said while going to her room to prepare for the meeting with the king underscore 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 on through the castle gates the two were greeted by a royal guard with orders to bring them to see the king for today's meeting. Walking through the large hallways with countless rooms and suits of armor lining the hallways she couldn't help but to Think that the amount of money spent on all the armor sets could probably feed the kingdom for a few months. Honorable guests please enter the strategy room. The guard said while opening the door for Alice and Erida. Thank you Stephen, Erida said to the guard while leading Alice into the room where the king and a handful of other people sat around a table. Thank you for joining us Alice, I am sure you have already heard of the demons who paid an unfortunate visit to the kingdom you came here from. We have not been able to verify the location of these demons yet but we have reason to believe they will visit this kingdom next. With that being said we would like to ask if you could talk with the demon king Kira seeing how you have an agreement with him. All we ask is that you try to prevent any harm to the citizens here, 
Without your help there will most likely be innocent lives lost. King Mark said gripping the handles of his chair tightly. I would but I do not know how to activate the mirror in Alistair's office, that is the only way know of to talk with the Demon King. Alice said wanting to help but not knowing what happened with Alistair. That won't be a problem Alistair still lives in this kingdom and we have moved the mirror to one of the rooms in the castle. One of my men would fetch Alistair and bring him to you where the mirror is currently located. King Mark said while telling one of the men in the room to take Alistair to the room and wait for Alice to arrive before taking his shackles off. If the Demon King won't make any promises, Alice questioned after the man left. Then, we will fight if it comes down to it as well as evacuate the area surrounding the gates. Let us pray that it does not come to that though. The King said while standing now, Arida, take Alice to the room where we would often talk about the good of the kingdom while drinking. King Mark said while offering his hand to Arida to help him up. Those days still live fresh in my mind, I long for the day when we can once again drink like that. Arida said while standing by the door waiting on Alice to join him. I will do what I can to help the kingdom your highness, Alice said with a slight bow of respect before leaving the room with Arida. I know you want to help but don't agree to anything troublesome for yourself, Arida said leading her through the long hallways of the castle. I don't plan on offering him anything. Alice said trying to work out what she was even going to say to the Demon King. This is the room, Alistair should already be inside so be careful I will stand outside and wait for the news. Be safe for Yumi's sake please, he said before closing the door behind her. Why, hello there Alice, it has not been that long since our last chat. Did you perhaps miss me? Lord Kira said with a smile having already been called on the mirror. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates. Better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. I wouldn't miss someone who threatens my friends and loved ones even if they died in a horrible way. Alice said not hiding the disdain in her voice. Now, now that is no way to talk to your future king is it? Lord Kira said jokingly. Future. King? A king is someone honorable who keeps their word, unlike a certain someone. She replied with a cold glare. I wonder what it is you're referring to Alice? Lord Kira said while waiting for her to explain what was going on. You mean to tell me you didn't send two of your demons to the Rudham Kingdom to kill and question people I knew? People who I used to be a party with? Alice said in a sarcastic voice not believing he didn't have anything to do with it. Why, it is true that I sent one of my men to investigate your background I did not tell them to kill or harm anyone. Lord Kira said growing annoyed thinking about how he would punish the two who went to the kingdom. You have my word they will be punished accordingly. I would be more than happy to let you watch their punishments. You can even tell me when to stop? How does that sound Alice? Lord Kira said wanting to see if Alice shared his taste for torture. While I would enjoy nothing more than seeing the ones who killed my friends killed I am afraid you can't do that for me since they are currently on their way to this kingdom. I don't need to remind you of our deal do I? Alice said trying to trap him while giving herself the opportunity to get out of the deal with no fault of her own. If they set foot in that kingdom I would like you to meet with the two men. They have strict orders not to harm you so they will at a minimum listen to what you have to say. When they let you talk tell them I said for someone who is so eager to make his king happy and be given more tasks to accomplish you have managed to piss me off. Come back now and I can look past this, stay longer than your talk with Miss Alice and you will be seen as an enemy of the kingdom. That should get his attention, but if things go bad for you then I will just compensate the kingdom for their losses. Lord Kira said clearly angry compensating. The kingdom won't be the only thing you do. I have many friends in this kingdom and if any one of them are harmed then you will have broken our deal and I will go into the wind so keep that in mind Mr. Demon King. Alice said before turning around to leave the room. Are you sure that is the way you want things to go Alice? You may be my daughter so I won't kill you no matter how much you piss me off run but your friends won't be able to escape unlike you. Think carefully before you leave the room. Lord Kira said now glaring at her dot turning around and walking up to the mirror close enough to feel as though she was standing directly in front of him she said, your people have taken who I care about the most once already, what makes you think I won't survive and come back to destroy you if you do it again? You're old and I am young even if it takes me 40 or 50 years I will still swear a blood oath to God to kill you, a man like you could never have the right to call me father. Alice said now infuriated once again letting her demonic gaze out passively causing her purple eye to turn a blood red color. You sure do take after your mother Alice, no one in this world other than her would dare say such a thing to me. I will stand by my threat though so don't feel too good about yourself. I will do what I can to make the two demons return to me but don't think I will be letting you go so easily. 
Lord Kira said leaning in closer to the mirror meeting her gaze with his own dot looking at his she wondered if she could use God's eye on his through the mirror Kira Ashkin level 150, king of the demon race, guess you better hope that your men don't mess things up for you then. Alice said before sinking into the shadow cast by the mirror keeping eye contact with him to show she meant what she had said dot reappearing from a shadow cast by a suit of armor in the hallway beside Erida she only looked down with a sad expression knowing she may have just killed off her friends with that exchange of words. I, did what I could, I think it would be best for you and Yumi to leave the kingdom and head somewhere far away, Alice said almost begging him, if, we die then we die, life is not forever I would rather die protecting someone truly important to the world than running away, Erida said pulling Alice in for a hug to let her know he does not blame her, but, he will really kill you and Yumi, I won't be able to become an angel anymore if I lose the two of you, the last of the good in my life will have been destroyed all by one race. I will be driven by hatred, Alice said in tears not wanting to be strong anymore, I wish my father was here, he always knew what to do, she continued to sob in his arms, your father may not be here but as a father myself I know he would not want you to cry Alice, he would say the same thing I would tell my daughter, pick your head up and always look forward, never let someone make you give up, Erida said trying his best to find the words to say to the broken girl in his arms, 39 marriage proposal. Looks like this is the kingdom that the girl Kira is after lives in, Kale said while riding his familiar, a large bird-like monster as large as some high-leveled boss monsters whose feathers were bright red and orange. I shouldn't have to remind you that Lord Kira has ordered you not to interfere with Drago's assignment in this kingdom. We got to have our fun in the Rudham kingdom so make sure you don't cause too much trouble. I can only do so much to protect you if you mess up. Kale's father Avon said while taking Kale's swords from him as he jumped off his familiar launching himself at the kingdom underscore 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 on through the streets trying to take her mind off of her talk with the demon king Kira she felt a large presence quickly coming towards the kingdom. Looking in the sky where she felt it she saw a bright red aura flying her direction dot as if picking Alice out of the crowded streets Kale luckily managed to land right in front of the woman he was searching for dot taking a small step back due to his dominating presence Alice quickly looked to see his level and took her scythe out feeling danger Kale level 125 fuck there is nothing I can do, she thought to herself seeing the tall demon with black armor, red hair and yellow eyes stand in front of her, no. Need to take your weapon out little girl I am only here to speak with the girl named Alice, if you tell me where she is I promise I will not lay a hand on you. Kale said now hiding his presence letting Alice and the people around him breathe a little easier. We can talk but you should know that your Kira is quite unhappy with you coming here. He is even more pissed off that you violated our agreement when you harmed my friends in the Rudham kingdom. Alice said, still ready to escape if she needed. I take it you're Alice then. Take us to a place to talk and I will leave without any trouble after our little chat. Kale said while taking a step closer to Alice and placing his hand around her arm to let her know she couldn't escape. Then, I ask we have our chat outside of the kingdom gates, I do not wish for you to kill anyone here if they come to interfere. Alice said while leading the way out of the kingdom hoping that no one would follow. If she was going to be captured she didn't want anyone to die over it. Walking with Kale behind her she felt the looks of everyone they passed along the way wanting to know what a demon of this level wanted with the pretty girl. So, what is it you would risk punishment from Kira just talk with me about? Alice asked trying to relax a little bit seeing Kale look more relaxed himself. I want to know where it is you came from. The information I got in Rudham left me to believe you have two purple eyes so I would also like you to explain your now gold eye. Other than that I wish to talk with you about the matter of becoming my wife. Trimages with your elements are very rare and I believe you will be worthy of me after some nurturement. You will be coming to the demon kingdom anyway so it would be very beneficial to you if I took you as my wife. Kale said while letting go of her and taking a seat on the ground. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates, better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. What makes you think that I would marry you? Alice asked shocked listening to him basically purpose to her. You're looking at things from the here and now point of view. I am looking at the future Alice. I want someone powerful as my wife and with some work you will surely be more powerful than any female demon in the kingdom. Of course it has some part to do with your beauty but if you agree just know that I will only ask for one offspring in turn I won't restrict you no matter what you want to do. Kale said while motioning her to sit with him. I understand you are in a weird spot. 
Kira plans to force you to come to the kingdom to serve him but what I offer is something different. You may even have more rights being my wife than you will being controlled by Kira so think about it. Kale said before she could reject forcing her to think of her future in the demon kingdom. Taking a seat not wanting to anger him while he is being so civil she replied with what she felt was her only choice. You should know that Kira is my father, do you think he would agree so easily to you marrying me? Hearing her words his eyes widened in shock not knowing exactly what to say. So, that is why he is so determined, we have taken two other tri-mages in the past and he has never once cared if they died. I will ask him for his permission then when I return to the kingdom so we can have this conversation at a later date. I still wish to know about your gold eye though, seeing how I plan to marry you I don't think you should see me as the enemy any longer so please try not to be on edge around me. Kale said while showing a softer side and being more gentle with his tone. I almost died recently in a dungeon and when I was able to wake back up my eye had changed color. That is all I know about my eye it really isn't anything special that needs questioning. It isn't like it can shoot out attacks you know. Alice said hoping he would just believe her and drop the subject. If you were not of royal demon blood I would still be curious but my last question would be where is your mother? I am sure that Lord Kira also wishes to know this information. Kale asked. My mother was taken from me a long time ago. I have been all alone for a long time now. I just recently found a family to call my own here in this kingdom one of them will even be coming with me to the demon kingdom. Alice replied still shocked that things have turned out so much differently than she was expecting. I am truly sorry to hear that Alice, I have only just met you but please think of me as a friend and an ally from now on. I will try to come and visit you when I can so we can better get to know each other before you give me your answer. Kale said while standing up and offering his hand to Alice to help her stand up. You utter fool, you think that Lord Kira will let you marry his daughter? Avon said while landing beside them on the giant bird. It has nothing to do with you father, I have made my mind up and Alice has been kind enough to not reject and give the offer time. You should be more happy for you son you know. Kale said annoyed with his father pointing out the obvious hurdle he will have to overcome I wonder how long I can pretend to be Kira's daughter, Alice thought to herself hating the fact she has to continue lying in order to survive. Miss, Alice please continue to grow and make sure to honor your promise with our lord, Avon said while handing Alice a necklace. What is this for? Alice questioned while taking the necklace which had a black star encircled by gold. This is the symbol of our family while I do not think that Lord Kira will approve of your marriage. I as a father would fail if I did not give a dowry present to the woman my son has proposed to. This necklace has the ability to speed up one's growth, it also serves as a token all demons will see as you being part of the royal family so they will leave you alone and in some cases listen to your words. We must return now, Aban said while mounting the bird once again. Since my father approves I will net time return with news of Lord Kira's approval. Please give me your answer at that time Alice. Kale said while following his father and taking off on the bird underscore 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 on into the room they held the meeting about what to do with the news of the demons coming to the kingdom she was met by Erida and King Mark. It is good to see that you're unharmed Alice, please tell us what happened and what did they want? King Mark questioned. The two demons that came to the kingdom are known as Aban and his son Kale. the son wished to ask me where I came from as well about my gold eye, he also asked for my hand in marriage, she replied while waiting for a response. It is good news then, if Aban the destroyer of kingdoms came with his son only to ask you to marry Kale, then that means there is no threat to our kingdom right now. With that being said I will not tell you what to do regarding this matter but just know that Avon is not someone to offend if you accepted then you no longer have a choice. The king said with a smile now that his people are safe. I didn't answer, I told his son that I will answer after he gets my father's permission. Alice replied, your father? Erida questioned knowing that wasn't possible. Demon. King Kira believes that I am his daughter. She replied not knowing what else to say. I See, then you plan to continue pretending to be his daughter? King Mark questioned again. I don't see any other option, if he believes that I am then it makes things easier for me when I go to his kingdom. He may even try to kill me if he finds out that I have been lying to him about this. Alice said, knowing that she could trust the king and Erida with this information. I think Alice has had quite the day your majesty, we should have a drink later. For now I wish to take Alice back home to have a private discussion. 
Erida said while now standing by the door underscore 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 on so what do you plan to do regarding the marriage and what is all this about the demon king thinking that you're his daughter how did that even happen? Arida asked while taking his seat in his office. Explaining everything to him, not leaving anything out, they failed to realize that Yumi was sitting outside the door listening to their conversation. If you ask me, then I think you should do it. Kale seems to want to help you, which will prove useful for you later on when you start living in the kingdom. While you may have reservations about this, keep in mind you can ask the wedding be put off for a longer period of time. This is not an uncommon thing for people in high status to do in the demon kingdom. His main concern also seems for you to become powerful so he may be looking for a war maiden to be his partner on the battlefield. Erida said thinking things through with Alice trying to help her make the smartest decision she can for her situation. I guess I will tackle that problem when the time comes, for now I need to focus on leveling. All the demons I have encountered so far are much stronger than I currently am. Alice replied while leaving his office only to see Yumi with her head hanging down depressed in front of the open door. 40 Yumi's Confession Yumi, what's wrong? Alice asked not thinking about how the marriage proposal she overheard might affect her friend. Can. We talk. Yumi said, wiping away her tears before walking away not even looking to see if Alice was following behind her. Following behind Yumi she started to think about the bigger picture when it comes to the quest she is on and Yumi's dedication to following her. Not to mention the kiss she received when she lost control of herself during the estate's invasion. Yumi. I Alice was cut off when they reached the garden as she was once again met with a kiss that took her by surprise. Before you say anything I want you to let me say what I have to say and after that I will accept whatever you say. So please listen. Yumi said red faced and glassy eyed while looking at her dot with a simple nod of her head Alice showed Yumi that she was ready to listen to everything she had to say whatever it might be. I was always even as a kid a little different from everyone else and I didn't really understand why until I got a little older. I have never had a boyfriend or liked anyone enough to care about personal relationships. The day you came into my shop started a domino effect inside me and I have struggled with it for a while not knowing how to tell you or even what to do about it. The more time I spent with you the more I began to not want to be away from you. Then I found out about you being an angel and having this whole holy quest laid on you by God and I was happy just being able to be a part of your life even if I had to go to the demon kingdom with you to help you. Yumi said while drying her eyes with her shirt sleeve and finding the courage to continue confession without chickening out. My whole point is that I love you. I love you as a precious friend, adventure, and every part about you from your past to your present. Hearing that someone proposed to you made my chest tighten up to the point I didn't know if I could breathe again. I know you're only thinking about your future and bringing your race back to life but to me, you are all I think about and I couldn't stand letting you get closer to someone else without me letting you know how I feel even if you reject me. That is all I had to say. Thank you for listening to all that I understand if you hate me now but I had to tell you. Yumi said trying not to tear up again while not being able to meet Alice's eyes afraid of what she might say. Seeing Yumi put herself out like this while trying her best not to cry Alice was not as surprised as Yumi thought she would be since Alice already somewhat knew that Yumi might be interested in her. For Starters don't be silly, I already kind of guessed you had feelings for me I just didn't know that you were that serious. I could never hate you no matter what you did in case you didn't realize unless you've killed my family I have more pressing things to worry about so don't ever think I will hate you. While I was indeed proposed to that doesn't mean that I have feelings for the person. In case you didn't realize who it was that asked me it was a demon, do you really think I will give myself to a demon of all people? Your father and I were talking about ways for me to buy time while in the demon kingdom seeing how being engaged to someone of high status on top of being perceived as Kira's daughter basically ensures mine and your safety while we are there. Alice said while hugging Yumi to cheer her up. You. Promise you don't hate me? You don't think I am weird? Yumi looked up and asked feeling a lot better while still feeling her chest tightening waiting to see if Alice would accept her feelings or reject her. Of. Course I don't hate you and no I don't think you're weird Yumi. I don't really know how to respond to your feelings right now though. Alice said honestly not knowing what she should say since she didn't like or dislike the idea of being with Yumi. I understand. I will wait for your answer then. Yumi said quite a bit happier now that she confessed and didn't necessarily get rejected. She saw hope in Alice's answer which was good enough for now. Then, do you want to go on an adventure just the two of us? Alice asked already knowing what her answer would be. I would love to. 
You still have to catch up in level to me seeing how I am level 20 now and you're level 19. Yumi said while taking off to her room to get all of her equipment before they set off to the Adventurers Guild to find some requests to take on seems like she is in a better mood, Little Shadow said laying on one of the tree limbs a few feet away. So, you heard all of that huh? Alice said while holding her arms out to catch her familiar. Every word, so what do you plan on doing about the proposal and Yumi? He asked while jumping out of her arms to walk beside her as they walked to their room. 4. Now I plan to take advantage of the demon Kale and his father for everything I can to help me reach higher levels as fast as I can. As for Yumi I honestly don't know she has been really good to me and everything I just don't know how I feel so I will give her an answer when I know. Alice said while putting her armor set on. Knock. Knock knock opening the door and walking into the room Alice was expecting Yumi but instead saw her father which made her feel a little awkward. So. How did things go with you and my daughter? She might not tell me everything but I still know if she is interested in someone. Arita asked while taking a seat on one of the chairs near the door in her room. She did confess to me, I don't know how I feel about her romantically so I told her I could not give her an answer yet. Alice replied, feeling even more awkward. She is happy when she is with you so that is good enough for me but please try not to hurt her I always imagined I would have this talk with a guy but I guess life works in unseen ways. Arida said while getting out of the chair and walking closer to Alice. I know you wouldn't hurt her on purpose but she is my daughter so please look out for her the best you can. Even more so when you two leave for the demon kingdom. Arida said again before leaving the room he is a good father, little shadow said laying on the bed upside down with his head slightly hanging off the edge. He kind of reminds me of my father to be honest which is why I think it is so easy to talk to him, ready to go? Alice said now standing in the doorway waiting on him to stop being lazy on the bed. Meeting up with Yumi in the hallway the two girls and Little Shadow left the estate to go and find some requests to take at the Adventurer's Guild request, kill Wind Lion request, kill Cobalt King that escaped dungeon request, gather Fire Lotus request, kill the Bazin we can take all of these but what is a Bazin? Alice asked, looking at the flyers Yumi took down. It is basically a bird the size of a horse that breathes fire. It sounds much harder than it is so don't worry about it too much, Yumi said recalling the time her father had to kill one on their travels when she was younger. Taking the flyers up to the receptionists the two got permission to go on the requests before leaving the guild to buy some potions and camping gear before they left the kingdom to go start their requests. Already having a general idea where to find wind lions Alice lead the way to where she thought they were located. Walking through the forest Alice got curious if she could bring other people with her into the shadows since it would make their travels a little faster. Hey, Yumi mind if we stop for a bit? I kind of want to try something. Alice said, stopping on a shadow cast by a large tree. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates, better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. Sure what do you want to try? Yumi asked curiously. Here, stand close to me and hold on. Alice said pulling her clothes when she got in arm's reach of where she was causing Yumi to blush with a big smile she tried her best to hide. Ready? Alice asked as the two of them slowly started to sink into the tree's shadow. Alice. Wait what are you doing? Yumi cried out in a panic not knowing what to do. Fully entering the tree's shadow Yumi couldn't even see Alice who was holding her close and before she knew it they were almost half a mile away from where they were just standing. That. Was scary? How are you able to move us so far? Yumi questioned before waving the question off and just accepting the fact Alice was a skilled shadow element user. I was curious and now I know if we get in trouble I can bring you with me to escape. Alice said happily now that she could bring others with her. We should be getting close to where the wind lions are so stay alert. Alice said while pulling out her scythe causing Yumi to take her weapon out as well. While looking through the forest the two girls left the lower leveled monsters for little shadow to kill so he could work on catching up to them in levels as well. Not having any luck after searching for a few hours Yumi suggested they look at the fly to try to find more information about the location they needed to go to. Pulling out the flyer Yumi saw that Alice was indeed correct about the location which just caused the two to wonder where the wind lions could have run off to. Ruyarrr. 41 Yumi meets Kale. Jumping to the side as fast as she could Alice was grazed by the wind lion's claws as it jumped down from the trees to attack her. Rolling on the ground Alice looked around only to see the wind lion ignoring Yumi and rushing at her again. Fuck. Can you leave me alone? Alice said in anger as Yumi wrapped her weapon's chain around the wind lion's neck stopping it just short of her giving her time to get back on her feet. Placing her hands on the ground Alice uses her spell abyss vines grabbing the lion with the vines and holding it in place. 
Attacking together Alice and Yumi both started chipping away at the lion's health while it could not move free from the vines. Roaring out in anger the lion broke free from her spell and used his element to form a small barrier around his body. Feeling powered up the lion rushed at Yumi seeing her as the weaker one of the two girls attacking him. Jumping in the air dodging her attack the lion landed beside her swatting her away with his paw sending her flying at a tree. Seeing Yumi about to crash into a tree she rift warped and caught her while letting herself be thrown into the shadow avoiding damage from the tree. Thanks. Alice Yumi said not able to see anything but knowing that Alice had saved her. You're welcome. When we come back out I will use a large spell so buy me a few seconds. Alice said exiting the shadow realm close to the tree they almost crashed into dot jumping free from Alice she started fighting the wind lion as best she could to give Alice all the time she needed to use whatever spell she had planned to finish off the wind lion dot placing her hands on the ground a large black circle spread out before large black vines shot out from the ground around Alice all charging forward at the wind lion as the spells only target dot crashing into the lion and wrapping it up. Almost instantly the lion was quickly dragged back to her as she felt her mana start to replenish quickly due to her spell as it drained all the mana from the monster. Moments later the spell broke and left behind the shriveled corpse of the wind lion giving Alice another level from defeating the monster. Name, Alice class, Demi Angel title, Hunter, Apprentice of NYXHP. 670-670 MP 1,975-1,975 level 1920 STR, 110-130 plus 10 VIT, 88 plus 5 int, 140-170, plus 5 plus 200, DAX, 45, plus 10 plus 5, DEF, 60, plus 5 plus 10 plus 10, AGI, 55, plus 5 plus 10, skill points, 50 skills, familiar telepathy, blessed by God, Passive, Demonic Gaze, God's Eye, Passive, Shadow Eye, Passive, dot putting most of her skill points into her instead she felt a rush as if the mana in the air around her was being drawn into her body. Not knowing that Yumi could see the effects of her level up as she watched as the wind seemed to be drawn to Alice the moment she finished putting her skill points into her int. What? Was that? Yumi asked, pointing out that the air around her had changed the moment she had leveled up. I... Gained about 150 more mana so I guess my body was absorbing the mana around me to make up for the change in my body. Alice said, guessing perfectly. How much mana do you even have now? Yumi asked already knowing it was higher than normal people for her level. It is just below 2000 now after I level up again it should be over that. She answered honestly seeing how she planned to put all 50 skill points into mana on her next level so she could use more spells in battle since her grimoire still had a lot of spells she had not learned yet. After finishing the first request the two debated on which request they should complete next. Agreeing on finding the kobold king who escaped the dungeon close by they started their travel in the general direction while chatting about the future and all the fun they plan on having once they reach higher levels together. We should split up and try to find the kobold king. The monsters are pretty scarce right now for some reason. Alice said pointing out the lack of monsters in the forest for some unknown reason. Splitting up they looked everywhere they could up until the point where they did not know where each other had gone to. What? Are you looking for Alice? Kale said landing softly beside her, taking her by surprise. I thought you went back to the demon kingdom what are you doing here? Alice questioned not knowing what to expect. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. I sent my father back alone. I decided to stay back and help you level up. After all who can protect you better than I can in this region. Kale said with a smile. Would you leave if I asked you to? How do you expect me to get stronger if you just plan to protect me the whole time? Alice asked wanting to leave as fast as he could before Yumi showed up. Don't worry about that. When you fight the only time I will step in is if your life is in danger. Now what monster are you looking for? My familiar can find the monsters in this forest quite easily. Kale said genuinely wanting to help her out. I am looking for a monster called the Cobalt King for a request my friend and I have taken at the guild. He should be a tall creature with white fur and a weapon or two seeing how he escaped from a dungeon. Alice said knowing things would be easier if he just located all the monsters she needed to kill. I will tell my familiar to find the monster you seek to kill, your friend I assume is a female with beast ears? She should be pretty close shall we go meet her? Kale said pointing in the direction Yumi should be, I guess. Alice replied with a sigh not knowing what else to do. Walking through the forest with Kale she tried playing out in her head all the reactions that Yumi would have and none of them ended very well. I have something to talk with you about. Alice said, 
getting Kale's full attention. My friend that I am with on this adventure has confessed her feelings for me and she is very important to me so if she freaks out seeing you I want you to promise that you will not get in an argument with her. Fighting her is also off the table if you even touch her I will take her and run. Alice said trying to plan ahead for anything that may happen. I don't see any issue with that. I believe I already told you the purpose in my proposal. I do not plan on keeping you from any love interest you may have as long as you are able to be mine during battle and come to see me as someone you can trust. Kale said walking beside her brushing off the question as if it was a small thing that didn't matter. With that being said though I will still want a child in the future but I do not plan on that being an immediate thing so if you like her and she is fine with this fact then I will not say another word. He continued. You're honestly nothing like what I imagined someone so close to Kira being. Alice said as they saw Yumi in the distance as she looked for the cobalt. Hey, Yumi. Alice said standing behind Yumi. What are you doing here? Yumi asked while noticing the demon standing next to her. Yumi. This is Kale the one who proposed to me. He stayed behind to help me level up and he does not mean any harm. Alice said while praying she would not freak out and cause any trouble. It is nice to meet you Yumi. My name is Kale and I wish to help you and Alice level before you two come to the kingdom. I should also point out I do not wish to keep Alice from you if she were to see you as a lover. He said with a small bow causing her to blush at the thought of her and Alice as lovers. I I guess it is fine then. Has Alice already told you what we are looking for? Yumi asked taking things better now that she knew she still had a chance with Alice even if she got married. My familiar has just relayed the location of the monster you two are searching for. If you follow me I can take you two there. My familiar currently has the monster held in place so it cannot escape. Kale said while taking a few steps ahead of them waiting on them to follow him. Oh, by the way Yumi I have given Alice a necklace which helps her level faster at these low levels. I have a spare if you would like to use it so you do not fall behind. He said while tossing her the same necklace Alice had been wearing. I guess that's why you wore that. Yumi said slightly under her breath now feeling much better about things. As the two of them walked behind Kale the three of them chatted about the demon kingdom and the current state of things which taught them quite a few things they did not know about the demon kingdom. The first being that while Lord Kira is the current ruler there are factions that oppose him still for the destruction of the angel kingdom which had never once attacked their own kingdom. Some of the opposers even held high positions of power only following Kira until they worked out a strategy to defeat him. Many of the demons used relics left behind by the angels to advance their own kingdom allowing them to create things such as the necklaces that Alice and Yumi now wore around their necks. The factions that opposed the king have been secretly been trying to amass an army of supporters for the day when they kill Kira and take his throne. One of the reasons for the delay in attack is due to the fact the major players all want to lay claim to the throne for themselves. With no clear leader for the rebellion they are smart enough to wait until the timing is perfect and either strike and decide later or wait until they have a clear front runner for the throne. The reason why he was telling the two girls this is because his father belonged to one of the factions that opposed the king. Aban while being a fierce opponent feared by many kingdoms was still on good terms with a few angels back when they still lived. Learning this Alice began to wonder if she really had to kill all the demons to finish her quest from God and why God would wish for the slaughter of an entire race to begin with. The second thing he informed them of was that Lord Kira while having opposers also had a great deal of powerful supporters who would not hesitate to lay waste to the whole world if he let them loose. If the two factions were to go to war with each other the entire kingdom might be destroyed which is why a war has not taken place since everyone has someone they do not wish to lose. The last thing he talked with them about was the angelic prophecy left behind and Lord Kira's relentless pursuit of silencing it. The prophecy itself was a source of power for the opposing faction. That group of demons believe that if they help that angel that they can right the wrongs of their race and be given mercy by the god who seeks vengeance for the crimes of eradicating the angels children and adults alike. 42 Steak and Wine What would happen if the existence of the angel was found? Yumi asked curiously wanting to know more about what will happen when Alice reveals herself. The two factions inside the demon kingdom would race to either kill or protect the angel, it would all depend on who got to the angel first. If the angel was lucky then they would be able to help the faction supporting them take over the demon kingdom for good. On the other hand if Lord Kira was to catch the angel first then the angels would be forever gone from this world. If that happened the demons who support the angels return fear that the god who wishes for the angel race to return would strike back harshly. It is all assumptions though since nothing about this prophecy is clear about what or how things will happen. 
Kale replied as they came into a clearing where Kale's familiar was keeping the Cobalt King from moving by using gusts of wind from its wings to trap the king against the side of a boulder. That is enough Perseus, Kale said to his familiar instructing him to let the monster go so Alice and Yumi could fight it fairly. Remember, not to help, Alice said pulling out her scythe and rushing towards the Cobalt King to attack. Following behind her Yumi swung her disc end of her weapon wide wrapping the chain around the Cobalt's legs preventing it from walking or running giving Alice the perfect chance to land a attack. Infusing her scythe with the fire element she jumped in the air and dug the blade into the Cobalt King's arm. Pulling it free causing a large amount of damage she rift warped behind the monster sinking her blade in the monster's back while increasing the amount of fire being released causing the cobalt to begin burning from the inside while Yumi sent the blade end of her weapon crashing into the monster's neck. Dropping to the ground defeated Kale began to clap trying to show he was impressed with their teamwork. You two make a good team. What shall we do next? He asked. Next. Would be gathering a fire lotus plant. The only problem is that we have no idea where to find it. The request did not give a location or a time limit to complete it. Alice said looking over the flyer trying to find any clues on how to find it. That is easy, I have a few with me. Fire Lotus plants can help fire element mages increase the power of their attacks. I don't mind giving you two one seeing on how I already gathered all the ones in the area previously. Kale said while tossing Alice one of the plants. I guess if there are no more around we have no choice but to accept the gift. All that is left is killing a monster called a Bazin, Alice replied, putting away the fire lotus. I will send my familiar to search for it, in the meantime we should have some lunch. Kale said pulling out everything needed to cook some meat with. Cobalt. Meat actually tastes pretty good would you two like to try some? He said again while cutting the corpse of the monster up and preparing it to cook. I didn't know that you could eat them, Yumi said, watching him prepare the meat. It is very good when you know how to cook it. He said salting the meat and pouring some oil in a skillet to fry it. Starting a fire with the snap of his fingers the skillet started to warm up the oil slowly while Kale cut a few 12 ounces steak seasoning them with various spices making sure to thoroughly season each slice. Gently setting one steak into skillet making the oil make a crackling sound paired with a pleasant aroma that soon followed both Yumi and Alice felt their hunger increase with the passing time it took him to cook the steaks. Why, don't you girls go find us something to drink while I cook? Kale said, still focusing on cooking the meat in front of him. I just so happened to bring some wine with me, Yumi said pulling out an elegant looking bottle of red wine with a golden label on it. That is some high quality stuff you have there Miss Yumi, normally one would drink that with a lover. Kale said a little more excited to eat now that he would be enjoying such fine wine with the steak. I just like the taste. Yumi replied not wanting to share it with him but still wanting to drink it with Alice who also seemed eager to eat and drink. Yumi used her earth element to create a small table and some stone chairs for the three of them to sit at while they ate. I have never seen someone use their element like that before, Kale said watching Yumi craft a place to eat while he finished the last steak. While enjoying the food and wine which seemed to lighten the mood of all three of them Yumi decided to ask a few hard-hitting questions to Kale to find out if he would be a threat to Alice in the future. Kale. I have been curious for a while now so I hope you do not mind me asking this but what faction are you a part of? Speaking honestly I support the return of the angels, while it is true I support and serve Lord Kira in whatever he needs I do not see a point in putting a target on my back to help an angel who may not even return in my lifetime. Does that answer your question? Kale replied finishing up his steak and drinking the last of the wine in his glass. Sort of, just for fun let's say that Alice was the angel what would you do then? Yumi asked causing Alice to start sweating a little. Haha, <laughs> if Alice was indeed the angel then I would have all the more reason to want to be with her. My father would be so overjoyed that he might fight Lord Kira on his own. With that said there is no way that Alice could be the angel. In all of recorded angel history there has never been an angel with the shadow element. Almost every angel has the higher tier light element called the holy element and as far as I know the only elements Alice has is fire, wind, and shadow. Kale said, enjoying the laugh you me gave him. Honestly, that is crazy how could I be an angel? Alice said relaxing a little more knowing that Kale did not suspect her in the slightest. I mean she is even Lord Kira's daughter so how would that be possible? Kale continued. If I am being honest with you, I do not know if Kira is my father he mostly just assumes it because his wife and I look similar while I share a certain gaze that she would apparently give him. Alice replied, well, 
Only the royal demons have the demonic gaze which I assume is what you are referring to so if you have that then I would also be inclined to suspect you of being his daughter even with lack of proof. Not that being his daughter will be a bad thing, in fact that alone will be enough to secure you some degree of safety in the kingdom. Anyways my familiar has located the Bazin it is currently attacking a group of merchants it seems. Kale said getting up and putting his things away. Let's go then, we need to save them if we can. Yumi said standing up waiting for a direction to run. Don't worry we can fly there on my familiar who will be here in a moment. Kale said, letting out a loud whistle. Landing close to Kale the familiar got down low allowing them to get on his back before flapping his wings hard sending them flying up in the air. Flying quickly towards the basin they made it in time to see one of the merchant's guards being burnt to a crisp by the basin's breath attack. Jumping off the familiar before if landed Alice used rift warp while falling to close the distance in a blink of the eye. Infusing her sod with the wind element she sent a large wind blade flying at the basin landing a hit on the monster's back with a lot of force knocking the monster down. We will let her fight this alone. I want to see how well she can do alone Yumi. Kale said, keeping them flying in the air to watch, not letting Yumi go to Alice's aid. Let me go damn it. What if she gets hurt? Yumi cried out trying to break free of his grip. Relax. I will not let anything happen to her. I just wish to see what she is able to do when she fights alone in a battle. Looking up to see Kale holding Yumi back, she was able to guess that Kale wanted to test her abilities. Knowing that she had to fight this alone, she quickly placed her hands on the ground and used her spell Abyss Vines, rooting the Bazin to the ground and keeping it from attacking her with his flaming breath attacks. Infusing the shadow element in her side, she passed the blade through the vines and then lodged the blade deep in the Bazin, changing the element to fire and increasing the mana output, causing the Bazin to let out a fire attack in an attempt to get rid of all the fire burning inside. Its body. Seeing her attack not working due to the nature of the Bazin, Alice withdrew her scythe from the Bazin and attacked any openings the vines gave her until her spell ran out of time, setting the monster free again. The Bazin, now free and severely injured, turned towards Alice and let out a large fire attack, trying to get revenge and burn her to ash. Rift warping out of the path of the attack, she used all her might while swinging the scythe, low cutting the Bazin's legs off. Almost dead, the Bazin looked at Alice before admitting defeat by laying flat on the ground, waiting on her to deal the finishing blow. Find authorized novels in Web Novel Faster Updates. Better experience, please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. Giving the monster what it wanted, she sunk her blade deep in the monster's neck, finishing it off for good. That was a great job, Alice. I did not know you had a spell to restrict an enemy's movements. That will be very useful on a battlefield. Kale said letting go of Yumi as they landed next to her. T thank you for saving us. One of the merchants said trying not to show his fear seeing Kale who was standing next to Alice. No problem, the guild issued a request to kill the monster anyways I am just happy that I got here in time to help. Alice relied with a smile having saved them while also gaining a level. 43 face to face at loss. Name, Alice Class, Demi Angel Title, Hunter, Apprentice of NYX, Sorceress HP, 735-735 MP 2,070-2,070 Level 2021 STR, 130-150-10 VIT, 88-100-5 INT, 170-180, 5-200, 40-5-10-5, 60-5-10-10, five plus ten plus ten AGI fifty five plus five plus ten skill points fifty zero skills familiar telepathy blessed by God passive demonic gaze God's eye passive shadow eye passive dot title gained sorceress having invested your blood tears and sweat into expanding on your magic capabilities you have been granted a title by God Grants the bearer a decrease in mana consumption required by spells by 50% plus 25% mana regeneration that means I can use the monarch version of abyss vines for only 500 mana meaning I can use it 4 times I really lucked out with this title. She thought to herself. Alice, are you okay? You have been standing here silently for a while now the merchant has even left. Yumi asked while shaking Alice bringing her back to reality. Yeah. I am fine my mana went past 2000 after my level up and I guess it took me some time to adjust. Alice said, making an excuse. Did. You say your mana pool is over 2000 while you're still in the early 20s level wise? Kale asked curiously. Yeah, I seem to gain quite a bit of mana when I level so my body goes through small changes after I level every now and then. Alice replied knowing he wouldn't pry too much at this point. Having completed all the guild's requests they got on the back of Kale's familiar now used to doing such an odd thing. Mind. 
giving us a ride back to the kingdom? Alice said while helping Yumi get on the giant bird. I do not mind but you should quickly gather more requests or even better turn them in and let me take you and Yumi to a place filled with monsters so you two can level faster. I will make sure only monsters you can handle get past me. Kale said as they flew towards the kingdom. What do you want to do Yumi? Alice asked. I don't mind going to level some more. Guild quests seem kind of pointless at this point. She replied wondering if they should even go back to turn the quests in since it would waste daylight. We will be right back after we turn the request in, Alice said as her and Yumi ran into the guild leaving Kale and his familiar in the middle of the street for everyone to stare at. Do you plan on telling him? Yumi asked while they waited on the receptionist to come back with their rewards. Why, tell him if I am going to have to kill him later? I would rather wait to find out if it's possible to only kill the bad faction before I make a decision like that. Telling him could end up with me dying before I get strong enough to protect us. Alice said honestly as they took the small amount of money and left the guild duck getting back on the familiar they quickly left the kingdom so people would feel safe to leave their homes again. So, where are you taking us and how long will we be gone? Alice asked holding on to the back of his armor so she didn't fall. Close. To the demon kingdom there is a valley that is filled with monsters of all levels at the bottom the monsters levels should be around 25, but I will help weaken them and let you and Yumi kill them until you reach level 30 or so before letting you two fight alone. Kale said calmly dot find authorized novels in web novel faster updates, better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. Um, how close to the demon kingdom? Yumi questioned now a little worried. About a day's journey away from the castle. Many demons like to train there so you will probably encounter more of my race while there. As long as neither of you remove your necklace you will be safe if you meet one. If I am around they will not even approach us, if they knew who Alice was some might even bow their heads seeing her. Kale replied with a chuckle. I sent a message to my father about my plans so there is a good chance he will come to meet us. Kale continued to say while looking up at the clouds just above them. We are so close to the clouds. Alice said reaching up letting her hand pass through them reminding her of when she and her father would go flying for one of their father-daughter bonding days they did every week. What is wrong Alice? Kale questioned seeing a small tear fall from her eyes. Just a very old memory of good times. She replied, keeping her hand in the clouds. You talk as if you have lived a long life, you can't be any older than 20 years old. He replied not saying anything more dot picking up the speed Yumi and Alice both held on tight as they started passing mountains at a rapid pace quickly clearing a day's travel time if they had to walk in the matter of minutes dot keeping the pace for roughly a hour they slowed down to a slower pace letting them both release their death grips they had on Kale who just rubbed his arms a little. You can see the valley if you look down. Kale said as they hovered in place in the air. Looking down, the two girls saw a huge valley lush with green trees and flowing waterfalls covering the whole valley in a beautiful sight. At the top of the mountains, they could see flying monsters circling the sky above the mountain peaks. Lower down the mountain, they could see all sorts of monsters they had only read about in the estate monsters from behemoths all the way to large scorpions with fire lighting the ends of their stingers. Do you think you could land from this height, Alice? Kale asked before pushing her off the bird dot screaming as she fell she managed to compose herself when she saw him falling next to her with Yumi on his back clutching him tightly as she screamed as well. Do your best for me, he said before increasing his speed and rushing towards the ground landing safely. Just how do you expect me to survive? Alice yelled out in anger swallowing her fear to try to find a solution I guess I could aim at a shadow but at this speed I might just fall into hell. Maybe I can rift warp a few times and land in the river. Ugh. Just when she thought of screaming for help she remembered when she had caused a tornado using her wind element. Closing her eyes she focused on making the wind around her twist around her as fast as she could make it go pouring as much mana as she needed to into the air around her. Looking up waiting on Alice to figure things out his eyes almost burst from his skull see wind violently circle around her at an increasingly rapid pace. The longer she fell the slower she would go as the clouds around her eventually got pulled in her direction and the ground beneath her started kicking up leaves causing the trees to bend as the monsters in the area began to panic. Opening her eyes that glowed white at the concentration of the wind element she was using she formed a full tornado connecting it with the sky and her controlling it at the center. 
To her surprise the tornado began using less and less of her own mana as the thick mana in the air served to help keep the tornado going. Not realizing that the less she used her own mana the more the tornado lost control she lowered herself slowly down as she could barely hear Kale and Yumi screaming at the top of their lungs for her to stop. Closing her eyes again as she gently landed on the ground she willed the tornado to stop causing the disaster to slowly fade away leaving her surroundings. In ruin, trees were uprooted and smaller monsters were flung clear across the valley. Are you trying to kill us what were you thinking causing all of that? Yumi yelled out still fighting the adrenaline caused from her fight or flight instinct telling her to run and find shelter. To think that you could use the wind element to this degree, Kale said giving her a small applause. If you used that on the battlefield then no enemy would ignore you some may even give up on the battle. I had no choice but to fly or die, Alice said punching him in the chest feeling her mana regenerate at a rapid pace. How much mana did you use just now? He asked. Probably. 1,800 or so, but my mana seems to regenerate pretty quickly here I am already almost back to full. She said being honest. That. Is honestly pretty frightening. Kale said, and replied, hearing her say those words. Someone like her could cause a natural disaster and wait a few minutes and do it all over again. She was much more dangerous than he had realized skill created call of the wind. In exchange for 1,750 mana you may call forth a devastating tornado and control it freely for 2 minutes. Mana may be added to keep the skill going for a longer duration. 1,000 mana equals 1 minute of time. Tidal gained Daughter of Aeolus, using the wind element uses 25% less mana seeing the system's notification Alice thought she was hallucinating in exchange for almost all of her mana she could freely control something of that magnitude. Do you think I killed any of the monsters around here? Alice asked curiously seeing all of the damage she caused. Probably. But if you did they are nowhere around here anymore. Kale replied as a monster fell to the ground in between them giving Alice another level for killing it. I. Killed one. I also leveled up because of it. Alice replied seeing both Kale and Yumi's faces now blank not wanting to believe what they just witnessed. It. Is nice to see you in person daughter. Kira said exiting a black gate that appeared next to them. Hearing his words her blood ran cold knowing exactly who it was that was making their appearance. Lord. Kira, Kale said as he kneeled on the ground with his head down. So, nice of you to help her level by taking her here Kale. Why exactly did you not inform me of your activities? Kira said exerting large amounts of pressure causing both Yumi and Alice to barely be able to breath. I, wish to help Alice level. You did not give me a task to complete so I wished to aid Alice as someone I have asked to marry. Kale replied, keeping his head down pulling Yumi down with him so she could avoid Kira's anger. Keep your head down if you want to live Yumi. Kale whispered to her. Did I give my permission for that? I do not seem to recall ever saying you had permission to go near Alice nor help her. Kira said, picking Kale up by the neck. Stop, I can decide for myself who I marry. A father who has no love for his daughter has no right to say anything about this matter, Alice yelled out fighting the pressure as best she could. 44 leveling and war. Who exactly told you I have no love for my own flesh and blood? Kira asked dropping Kale to the ground where he kneeled once again. Would. A father who loved his daughter rather strangle a man before hugging his daughter the first time he sees her? Alice replied now angry she has to call him father to his face causing her to passive release her demonic gaze skill again. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates, better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. Your gaze has gotten much stronger from the first time you used it on me dearest daughter, have you decided to come home early? He asked now standing in front of her. Like, hell I would want to come to you early. Alice snarled not able to hide her disgust towards him. Hey. Cub should not bear her fangs at their father, bad things could happen. Kira said, forcing a hug on her. And, a father should be a respectable role model to his daughter, and you are far from having my respect. Alice replied, pushing him away. Kale, be sure to keep the future leader of our kingdom safe. I do not need to tell you what I will do if anything happens. Kira said before leaving back through the summoned gate. Are, you two okay? Alice asked rushing to help Yumi up who was visibly shaken. I. I'm fine, Yumi replied, trying to calm down. Okay, the worst thing that could happen while being here happened already so now we just need to focus on leveling you two up. Kale said while giving Yumi a hand. Sounds like a good plan, where do we start? Alice replied ready to vent some anger. The monsters are a little too strong for you two to handle right now so I will weaken them until you are able to catch up to the lowest leveled monsters here. 
After that I will leave things to you ladies, Kale replied, erasing his presence allowing the nearby monsters to come out of hiding. Following Kale as he immobilized numerous monsters that came out of hiding Alice and Yumi both took turns finishing off the monsters that were already on the brink of death allowing them to gain a good amount of experience at a decent pace. Hours passed by as the two girls slowly racked up enough experience to level up a few times bringing Alice's level to 25 and Yumi's level to 24. Having reached the level requirements to fight monsters in the area Kale gave the two time to prepare themselves for when he stops protecting them and lets them fight alone. Name, Alice Glass, Demi Angel Title, Hunter, Apprentice of NYX, Sorceress HP, 1,005-1,005MP2,190-2,190 Level 2125STR, 150-200 plus 10 VIT, 100-150 plus 5 int. 188 208 plus 5 plus 200 dex 45 plus 10 plus 5 def 6100 plus 5 plus 10 plus 10 agi 5595 plus 5 plus 10 skill points 200 zero skills familiar telepathy blessed by god passive demonic gaze god's eye passive shadow eye passive Dot having reached level 25 and putting her points into the areas she believed would help her the most Alice could not have imagined that when she finished the process would cause her body to undergo such drastic changes. Her hair became a little darker, her body became even more toned and fit while her aura gave off a sense of pressure not yet comparable to Kale or Kira but still they're all the same. Alice felt even stronger than she did while she was an angel but knew that this feeling was only due to the fact she got so much stronger all at once. Seems. Like you are quite a bit stronger now Alice, Kale said noticing her aura and hair changes. Yeah, I feel stronger after having had time to adjust to my leveling. She replied dot looking at Yumi who was also feeling quite a bit stronger the two girls turned to Kale and let him know they were ready to begin dot jumping into the air and leaving their sight the monsters began to act normal again allowing Alice and Yumi to treat this like any other adventure they would go on. I will distract them and you attack. Alice said to Yumi that replied with a nod as she readied herself. Seeing a large scorpion in the distance, Alice dashed forward and sliced its stinger off, only expecting to do a small amount of damage. Seeing her attack be so effective, Alice repositioned herself and kept attacking the monster to get a grip on her newfound strength so she would be able to gauge her abilities better during the rest of their fights. Having killed the scorpion before Yumi could even get off a attack, Alice felt proud of the fact she could solo the level 25 monster already. Maybe. Let me help next time. Yumi said a little sad she didn't get to help Alice in the fight at all. Yeah, sorry I did not expect to be able to cut through them so easily, Alice replied honestly. Together. This time, Yumi said as another scorpion made its way to them. Holding herself back a little she fought beside Yumi as they worked on taking out the scorpion's legs before killing it. Having done this a few times they improved their teamwork. Yumi would use her weapon to wrap the scorpion's legs preventing it from moving while Alice would get rid of its stinger. Moving on from fighting one monster they began to fight two at a time increasing the stress and difficulty forcing them to learn to sense when a monster was going to attack even if they were not directly looking at the monster attacking. Learning to develop this battle sense they took a few attacks while pushing through killing the scorpions until they finally leveled once again. Moving further away from the river they began encountering monsters a little stronger. The first one they came across other than the scorpions was a minotaur. The beast stood roughly six feet tall and held a large axe. Dot ready to attack Alice ran towards it without telling Yumi causing her to follow behind her in a panic not having a strategy in place for this kind of monster. Dot throwing her scythe in the air to distract the large beast Alice leaped forward landing on her hands and pushing off the ground doing a front flip while casting abyss vines to target the monsters as she caught her weapon and took a hard swing at its back damaging the monster before. It was dragged away by her spell. Throwing the blade end of her weapon at the monster's exposed head, Yumi cut through a portion of the monster's face, spraying blood on the grass as it struggled to break free. Jumping on the minotaur's shoulders, Alice lowered her scythe to his neck and yanked the weapon up hard, decapitating the monster, something she had not done in a while. Yumi, cringing at the sight, said a small prayer for the now headless monster as the first of his kind to be killed by Alice. Jumping off the monster and releasing the spell, Alice stretched as her stomach growled. Guess. I am a little hungry after fighting for so long, Alice said, rubbing her stomach. I am a little hungry as well, you are pretty hard to keep up with. Yumi replied while digging through her bag to take out some dried meat. Done. Already? Kale said who had been keeping watch close by. Just. Hungry? Alice replied. Well, it is getting dark and we should head back soon, 
Kale replied handing the two girls some food he had managed to cook while they focused on their battles. Thanks, you are probably right. Yumi's father is probably really worried about us. Alice said happily eating the food. Let's head back then, meet me by the kingdom's gates tomorrow and we can come back here. Kale said, calling his familiar down from the sky duck flying back and arriving at the kingdom a little faster than the two expected they said their goodbyes to Kale who waved before taking to the sky and flying away duck walking back into the kingdom they noticed a large military presence all over the place patrolling the streets in full armor. I wonder what happened? Alice asked while they casually walked through town. We should just head home, my father will probably tell us. Yumi replied, Miss Astella your father is waiting for you and Miss Alice inside with the king. Please make your way immediately to them. A guard standing at the estate's gates informed them that looking at each other Alice grabbed onto Yumi and took her into the shadows and brought them into Arida's office almost instantly where King Mark and Arida were seated and talking. When did you two get back? Arida asked not surprised Alice was able to bring Yumi with her in the shadows. A hey, few minutes ago what is going on? Yumi asked while taking a seat next to her father. The Kingdom of Rudham is waging war on our kingdom because of the demon attack that took place there. They see it as us taking sides with the demons since there have been growing cases of the demons showing up and leaving with no casualties here. We have explained the best we could but they refuse to talk, they are set on war. King Mark replied. This is all my fault. Alice replied, there is nothing we can do about it, you cannot back out of your deal with the demon king and I do not plan on backing out of our alliance so if a war takes place so be it. King Mark replied with a long face, is there not anything we can do to prevent this? Alice asked, the only way would be killing you, and if that happens out kingdom will not be the only one in trouble with the demons. I am quite sure the demon king is already aware of what is going on. Arida replied, should I just leave? Alice asked again. No, Yumi blurted out at the thought of her leaving already forgetting she would be able to go with her. Yumi is correct, you don't need to leave we will wait until they march and then we will take a defensive position. Our allies in the west have agreed to take refugees while the battle happens, I am confident we can win but I still do not wish to be in a war against Rudham I have many friends there. King Mark replied. I will help fight then. I am level 26 now and have a large magical attack I can use to chase them off and hopefully prevent them from attacking. Alice said while explaining her new wind element attack she had developed at the valley. That kind of attack is quite amazing, if they do march on us then I would be happy if you could use it without taking any of their lives. The king replied thinking of ways to use Alice's power without anyone losing their lives. Just call on me when you need me. Alice said while giving a bow to the king before leaving the room. A lick. Yumi tried saying before she was cut off by her father, let her have some time, she feels to blame for this war she could probably use some time to think. Arida said while asking his daughter to sit back down why give me this system god, why do I have to be the one responsible for all of this, the quest, war, demons I just want my family back. Alice thought to herself not expecting god to reply as she laid on her bed where little shadow was sleeping, 45 god and decisions. Laying down on the bed Alice tried to make her thoughts heard to God telling him she wanted answers. She needed answers as she drifted off to sleep from such an exhausting day. Opening her eyes Alice was no longer in her room, instead she was sitting at a table made of gold surrounded by statues of angels and a vast blue sky without clouds or a Sunday. How did I get here? Alice said out loud as she looked around trying to find some sort of hint as to where she was. Hello, my child. I have heard your prayers and I have brought you here to answer whatever questions you may have. A tall handsome man stood in all white clothes that looked like they had never seen dirt before. Are you God? Alice questioned. Indeed. God said while taking a seat across from her. Why? Me? Alice asked. Because. You are the only one of my children that can accomplish what needs to happen in order for the angel race to be brought back to the world. He replied now holding a cup of tea that appeared from thin air. You. Are God right? Can you not just bring them back like you did to me? Alice asked. You are the third one of your race I have reincarnated and the one most likely to succeed in this mission. I may be God but I am not all powerful, to bring you back it took me ten years of draining all of my power. However if you can manage to complete the quest then you will have the power to create angels. You will be the mother of all new angels in the world, from you will be born a new era in the world. A world where angels and all the races live together, this is my wish. God replied with a smile, but, you are asking me to eradicate the demons, I have met a demon who is not a bad person, am I still to kill this demon, 
What about the demons who wish for the angel's return? Alice asked. I will make you a deal. You can let the demons live who forego their dark god and worship me instead. God replied. Once they bow to you as my apostle and take an oath in front of you to worship me only then will they be allowed to live. He continued with a more serious demeanor. About you saying I will be the mother of all angels. How am I supposed to do that when I am the only angel alive? Alice asked, now thinking of how in the world she is supposed to just push out angels. It is about time for you to wake up now pray to me again anytime Alice, God said snapping his fingers. Quickly standing and getting off of her bed Alice looked around realizing she was back in her room where she had fallen asleep what is wrong Alice? Little Shadow asked while stretching on the bed. I met God I think. She replied did you get any answers? I got some but not enough to be happy about it. Alice said, hearing a lot of commotion outside the estate. Alice, come quickly Yumi said busting through her door. What's wrong Yumi what is going on? Alice asked as Yumi dragged her outside. Looking in the sky Alice's eyes widened in shock seeing the sky giving off a white glow as trumpets sounded from the sky above them. What is this? Yumi asked in a low voice to Alice. I had a dream where I talked with God. She replied, still looking at the sky while it slowly faded back to normal. Maybe, it was not a dream. Yumi replied, still holding her hand. I, assume you know something about this. Erida said now standing next to her and Yumi. I, spoke with God about my mission to bring back the angels. She replied in a hushed voice. Remembering that Kale would be waiting outside the kingdom for them Alice's expression got a little darker wondering if she would be found out so soon. Reading her expression Yumi also recalled who would be outside of the kingdom and let her father know they would be back after a few hours as she and Alice rushed off out of the kingdom. Seeing Kale and his familiar hiding their eyes still they stood next to him and asked what was wrong with him. The light above your kingdom has holy magic in it and it burns to look at. Is it gone yet? Kale asked not wanting to go blind from the light. Yeah, it is gone, sorry we are late. Alice replied, while trying to think of a way to talk with him about swearing an oath to her god. Good, I assume that the angel that Lord Kira is looking for is in this kingdom. What happened just now was likely a sign to the angel from their god. Kale replied, rubbing his eyes a little dot panicking, Yumi slowly grabbed her weapon while he was not paying attention to her. She looked at Alice to see what they should do. Seeing this Alice decided to just blurt out the truth and hope for the best. It's me. I am the angel and God was talking to me in my dreams. Alice said getting ready to evade and run with Yumi if she had to. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates. Better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. That's a good joke Alice, but there is no way an angel would have the shadow element like you do. Kale replied with a bit of laughter. Alice. What are you doing? Yumi asked, looking just as scared as she was. Wait, you're being serious? Kale asked, now looking serious as he focused on Alice. I am. I was given a mission and that is why I am telling you this. I hope that you will listen to what I have to say. Alice replied seeing that Kale didn't show any hostility towards her yet. Then, speak. He replied, giving off no emotion. I will start from the beginning. I was born as an angel a long time ago. I lived a happy life just as anyone else would in times of peace. My people stayed in the kingdom and kept to themselves living off of God's grace and life was good. One seemingly normal day it happened, the demons invaded our kingdom in full force with no warning. I do not know how they managed it or why they attacked us but they did. I remember the chaos that came that day vividly as if it happened yesterday. To everyone in the world it happened a long time ago but to me it was less than a year ago. I was chosen by God to reincarnate. When I woke up I was in a new body with no wings and no idea where I was. Not long after I was given my mission to help bring back my race, by getting stronger along with other things I must accomplish in order to do so. Alice said in what she felt was one breath. You expect me to. Kale started to say before being cut off by Alice. I'm not done please let me finish. Alice interrupted before continuing with her story. What you saw above the kingdom just now was the result of God talking with me. I was really stressed and decided to try and pray to him. Surprisingly he responded when I was sleeping and I had some of my questions answered regarding bringing back the angels as well as other aspects of my mission. God wants me to get stronger, he wants me to get strong enough to the point where I can defeat Kira along with any other demons who try to stop me. He also wants me to bring him into the demons lives by letting them choose to worship him while forsaking the dark god they serve now. Telling you this is a risk but I don't think you're a bad person like the demons who eradicated my race. 
Alice said before taking some time to calm her racing heart as Yumi held on to her hand trying to support her and face whatever happens together. You're lucky I am the only demon around, if any of the others heard this I doubt it would take long to reach Kira's ears. Putting aside some of the things you said you clearly have demonic abilities and you might be Kira's daughter. How do you explain that? Kale asked, trying to process everything Alice was telling him. I can't explain any of that? Alice replied honestly. It is pretty much a given that the angel in the prophecy is going to take revenge somehow, mind cluing me in? Kale asked, keeping his emotionless tone. In order to bring back the angels one of the things I must do is wipe out the demon race. I pleaded with God after meeting you and listening to everything you told me about the two factions to spare the demons. He has agreed to let all demons who forsake the dark god and worship him be allowed to be spared. Alice replied while taking a step to the side slowly into an area with shade cast by the walls. Basically, if I do not worship your god now in the future you will kill me, but what happens if I kill you where you stand? Kale replied coldly. 46. Danger in the Valley Hearing the words come out of Kale's mouth sent a shiver down her spine as she held onto Yumi's hand as she was already halfway into the shadows. Alice. Wait, I am not going to kill you. I didn't know if it was the truth or a joke and this seemed like the best way to find out for sure. Kale replied pulling her out of the shadows and showing a face that showed how sorry he was. That was seriously messed up, I almost died of fear. Yumi half yelled with tears still in her eyes. Does this mean you will worship my god? Alice asked still trying to calm down. No, I have not decided yet. The way I see it I have plenty of time until you're strong enough to kill me so once the time gets closer I will be sure to let you know my decision. Kale replied calmly. You don't plan on telling anyone do you? Yumi asked concerned for Alice's safety. Not just yet, when she is strong enough to defend herself then I will put the word out to her supporting faction within the demon kingdom. Until that time I will help the both of you level as much as I can. He replied with a smile thankful he did not scare the two of them off with his test. All right, so what is the plan for today? Alice asked petting Kale's familiar. I want to take the both of you back to the valley and let you two train for a few hours. I do not have as much time today as I did the other day unfortunately. He replied as they got on the large bird duck flapping its wings hard the familiar lifted them into the sky and began flying at a rapid pace above the clouds. I love the view from up here, Yumi said watching the land below them quickly fly by. So, do I, it feels amazing to fly through the sky with your own wings. Alice replied closing her eyes while trying to remember the feeling she got when she was angel flying with her friends. Since, you're a angel can you use the holy element? Kale asked wondering what else she is hiding from him. No, in the future I might be able to. For now I cannot unfortunately. She replied honestly. We are getting closer, I will take you me to the ground. This time I want you to jump down Alice and try not to cause such a mess this time please. Kale said grabbing onto Yumi and jumping off of his familiar dot looking down Alice longed to have her wings back even more. If she had her wings this would be as simple as breathing, but now she had to rely on her wind element which was growing stronger dot taking a deep breath Alice jumped off the large bird and let herself free fall for a moment enjoying the feeling dot opening her eyes she began to use her wind element again but this time she caused a powerful gust of wind to slow her speed as she feel until finally she landed gracefully on the ground causing Yumi to clap a little. Your Really getting the hang of your elements it seems. Kale said while climbing a tree and laying back showing the two that they are on their own for now. Should we stick with the lower level monsters or head up the valley a little and make it a harder fight? Alice asked pulling her scythe out of her inventory. MMN. Let's push ourselves I mean Kale wouldn't let anything happen to us anyways right? Yumi said taking her weapon out as well dot taking things slow the two girls carefully made their way through the lowest level monsters of the valley. Do. You wanna see who can kill a scorpion the fastest? Alice said with a grin trying to make a game out of it. You're on. Loser has to eat a scion pepper? Yumi replied laughing referring to one of the hottest edible peppers in the area. Deal, there are two up ahead. I will go left you go right when I will come help you when I finish. Alice said teasingly as she ran off to get a head start on the solo battle. Following behind her not wanting to lose Yumi sent her blade flying into her scorpion's head successfully getting its full attention. Jumping out of the way and sending her weapon flying out wrapping the legs of the scorpion immobilizing it she pulled a dagger she kept as a spare weapon out and began to chip away at its health. Not any further behind in damage Alice danced around her target letting her scythe swing around her dealing large amounts of damage to the scorpion as it took all of her attacks head on trying to get close enough to deal some damage to her. Not realizing she was releasing mana while she swung her weapon. 
Around Finn's team's out air seemed to be cut around her making her look like her attacks were made in the dark with fire. Swinging her weapon hard she sunk her blade into the scorpion's body and infused her weapon with the fire element burning the monster from the inside out killing it. Looking over to Yumi she noticed that she had also just finished up with her fight. Walking over with a smile Alice began to gloat, hey loser good job on winning your fight. Damn, I really tried my hardest to beat you, Yumi replied pouting, I guess you will have to try harder next time, but I am really proud of you for keeping up. Alice said patting her on the head duck getting praised by Alice made Yumi feel like she got a reward even if she didn't win the bet. We shouldn't stay in one spot for too long, I still need to put more effort into getting stronger you know. Alice said as she took Yumi's hand and ran further up the valley darting past the rest of the scorpions since they no longer put up a good fight. Slowing down they both realized almost at the same time that they couldn't find any monsters in the area which seemed strange since up till now the whole valley seemed packed with them. I think we should probably head back down Alice, I don't like how it's so quiet. Yumi said trying to convince her to turn back around. Don, T, be such a chicken Yumi, Alice replied letting go of her hand and facing her. R. You okay? Why so cautious all of the sudden? Alice asked curiously. Trying to think of a way to reply, Yumi's eyes widened in fear as she had trouble moving or finding the words to warn Alice of the danger behind her. Yum. CRSSSSK Yumi screamed out in fear and worry as Alice was thrown violently into the trees by a tall ogre like monster who didn't make a sound as it walked through the forest. Find authorized novels in Web Novel Faster Updates better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. Trying to get up and look around while fighting the blurry vision and throbbing pain in her head Alice was able to see Yumi standing helpless in front of the monster as it lowered its face to hers and let out a deafening yell sending saliva flying at Yumi. Kale. Help. Alice tried to yell out only to find her voice horse Jasker the ogre demon level 52 he lp. Me. Yumi said in a soft frightened whisper before getting picked up in the monster's large hands and lifted into the air above his head. 47 death. Not able to move fast enough to save Yumi or yell loud enough to call for help Alice had no choice but to watch as Yumi was dangled in the air above the ogre demon's mouth. Knowing things were helpless Yumi turned to face Alice and while holding back her tears she smiled one last time for Alice before the ogre demon swallowed her whole. Seeing yet another person she cared about taken from her Alice stood up slowly as the anger and hatred inside her built up with every passing second. Hot tears fell from her face as she just let her anger consume her causing the mana around her to become unstable forming a dark mist around her. Every step she took left a scorching footprint behind as she used her scythe as a crutch to get closer to her enemy. You. Took my. Family you. Took my. Family you took me family. Why did you have to take everyone I care about again? She shouted powerfully as her golden eye glowed brighter and her other eye looked as if there was an endless void in its place. Loosing all reason she moved purely on instinct and reflex fooled by all the hatred she held in her heart. Controlling the wind around her she managed to keep the ogre demon steps away from her while pushing him back every time she took a step. Gray -a 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 -a. The ogre demon yelled out annoyed as he threw a large wooden club hurling at Alice even against the wind. With one swift motion she raised her blade sending two large halves of the weapon flying by each side of her crashing into the ground. I will kill why Alice started yelling only to be knocked unconscious having exhausted her mana. Sigh, I told you that I wouldn't help so why did you have to wander off so far? Kale said throwing Alice over his shoulder and throwing a dagger into the ogre demon's skull killing it instantly. To think you made me save you and now I have to try to save you me. He said to himself as he cut through the monster's body pulling Yumi's limb body from his stomach. Checking her pulse Kale found her to be on the verge of death from having been deprived of oxygen for so long. I guess there is no other way. He said before holding her nose closed and putting his lips to hers blowing air back into her lungs. Cough. Cough cough Alice run. Yumi said weakly before passing out. Carrying both the injured girls to a opening, he called his familiar underscore 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 on Alice wake up Alice Shadow said, calling out to her repeatedly as she laid asleep on her bed covered in bandages. What? Shadow? I don't feel good, let me sleep. Alice replied still mostly asleep before quickly trying to jump out of her bed as the memory of what happened in the valley came rushing back to her. Ouch, fuck I am so sore. Shadow how did I get back home? I have to go back. I have to go get you me? Alice said starting to panic wanting nothing more than to retrieve her friend's body to bury her Yumi is here, she is safe. Try not to move so much, 
you have broken ribs. Little Sho replied jumping onto her lap and pushing his head softly against her stomach to get her to lay back down. I, could T protect her? Alice said with tears in her eyes feeling guilty that she didn't just listen to Yumi when she wanted to go back. I, almost got her killed. I almost lost my family again. She said sobbing and holding Little Shadow close to her she is alive though thanks to Kale, but you're right you did almost get her killed. If you know that then learn from your mistakes and pay attention to your party members and your surroundings or next time she really will die. Shadow replied knowing that if he coddled her she wouldn't grow from the experience as a person or a leader. Hearing his words send needles stabbing into her heart as she cried more. Knock. Knock may I come in? Arida asked from the other side of the door not knowing if it would be a good time to see her or if he should leave her alone for a while more. Yes. Alice replied just barely loud enough for him to hear. Opening the door Arida along with Kale entered the room which took Alice by surprise that Kale was even allowed inside the estate. What? What is going on? Alice asked while wiping away her tears on her sleeve. I, brought you and Yumi back home after you exhausted all of your mana in a fit of rage. I thought it would be best if, I stayed here to make sure the both of you woke up. Kale replied taking a seat on the couch in her room. If, it wasn't for Kale then both you and my daughter might be dead. Arida said looking sad while taking a seat next to her. Where, is Yumi? Alice asked trying to get up. She, is in her room resting but I assure you she is fine now. Arida said placing his hand on her shoulder. Kale, and I have been discussing what to do about things for now and we both agree that it would be best if you and Yumi stayed in the kingdom for a while and did things as normal adventures to let you both develop your senses without having a safety net. So for the time being Kale will be going back to his kingdom until you have reached level 50 and can stand on your own at the bottom of that valley to train. Arida continued while rubbing the top of her head before giving her a hug. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates. Better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. Please don't scare me like this again, I may not be your real father but I see you as my daughter and I couldn't bear seeing anything happen to you. He said again before getting up and leaving for Yumi's room. You're lucky to have a father figure like him. Kale said almost jealous. So, you're leaving? Alice asked. Arida, is right I rushed into helping you too too fast. The both of you need to learn how to read the situations you enter with me around you won't take things as a life and death situation. He replied tossing her a small scroll. What? Is this? Alice asked looking at the scroll in her hands if. You need help just destroy this and I will come as fast as I can. But be careful I won't be able to get here for a few hours so be sure to not get yourself in any trouble you cannot handle. I should be leaving now I hope I can see you again soon. Kale said jumping out of her window into the sky and flying off on his familiar he seems like he is a true ally. Shadow said curling up on her lap. I, think so as well. Alice said hoping she never has to kill him. I, want to go see Yumi. Alice said slowly getting up and walking out of her room. Knock. Knock knocking on Yumi's door she slowly entered her room and saw her laying in her bed looking weak and peaceful sleeping as if it was all a dream that she was swallowed by the monster. I, will give you some time with her. Arida said leaving the room dot nodding her head as he passed by her Alice took a seat on Yumi's bed next to her and brushed the hair out of her face gently. I, am so sorry I didn't listen to you. I hope you can forgive me. Alice said trying not to tear up again. I know you're asleep but you did a really good job not dying and leaving me behind. You would probably yell at me for doing this when you are asleep but that's the best I can do for now. Alice said leaning over Yumi letting her hair gently fall and brush against her skin as she gently gave Yumi a soft kiss as a reward. I promise next time I will be able to save you myself. Alice said laying down next to her falling asleep. 48 God, NYX, and the Demigod. Not wanting to wake Yumi up she sank into the shadow next to her bed planning on going back to her room. As soon as she was completely in the shadows Alice started to panic not being able to leave backslash what the fuck? Why can't I leave? Backslash she said to herself trying her best to find a way to leave and return to her room backslash no need to panic my child. You will be able to leave after our chat. Backslash a mysterious figure said revealing herself next to Alice. Trying to use her eyes to see any information she could about the strange landy approaching her she was even more surprised to see that no information would show backslash trying to read me without permission is rude, you know all you have to do is ask. Backslash the lady replied snapping her fingers and changing the area they are into a well-lit room with strange decorations everywhere backslash who are you and where are we backslash alice asked not wanting to anger someone clearly more powerful than she is backslash i guess i can't blame you for not knowing but my name is nyx the goddess who gave you your left eye 
It is nice to finally be able to speak with you in person Alice. Backslash NYX replied with a smile backslash why have you brought me here? Backslash Alice asked, looking around at all the decorations noticing there was no door or windows, she was in a room completely sealed off from the world backslash to chat of course, this is a room I bring all of my children to at one point or another. Backslash NYX said brushing her hair to the side as she sat in a chair across from Alice. Backslash please take a seat so we can talk. Backslash giving her a nod she took a seat on one of the elegant looking seats next to her. Backslash what do you want to talk about? Backslash Alice asked not sure what to say or do in front of a goddess she has never heard of backslash what would you say if I could offer you a different path than that old man you worship? Backslash NYX asked that before even being able to think of a response the room began to violently shake as a deep voice began speaking. Backslash NYX what do you think you're doing with my chosen one? Backslash God asked in a furious tone backslash oh relax, she may be your chosen one but she has my power flowing through her. It is only right that I am allowed an audience with someone who can use my power. Backslash NYX replied in a bratty tone backslash NYX how dare you taint my creation. Backslash God yelled even angrier. Backslash if all you're going to do is yell then you can leave. Backslash NYX said, snapping her fingers causing the room to stabilize, getting rid of God's voice backslash sorry about that. He is a grumpy old man. Have you thought about what I asked? Backslash NYX asked, crossing her legs with a smile backslash what path are you even talking about? Backslash Alice asked trying to process what was going on. When she was a angle she had only ever prayed to her god and now she has come face to face with two different gods backslash the old man wants you to bring back your race by eradicating the demon race as they did to your angel race. I however can offer a better path to what you want. It is as simple as that backslash can you tell me about it. Alice asked genuinely curious about the new path before her backslash instead of causing a bloodbath that will last for decades you can take me as your goddess and become my apostyle in return I will transfer enough power to the old man to recreate two angels. A male and a female it will be enough to bring the angel race back and you will be able to walk the lands a free woman. The only thing I will ask you to do is build a kingdom with little old me as the goddess your people worship. Sounds like a good deal yes? Backslash NYX said with a smile, taking a sip of a drink that she seemingly got from nowhere backslash I won't have to kill anyone? Backslash Alice asked nervously backslash who you kill is your business as long as you continue working towards the path I gave you. Backslash NYX replied without expression. Backslash what if I fail? Backslash Alice asked, now making eye contact backslash if you do then you will simply cease to exist, I will take you from the world and your body and soul will be gone forever. Backslash NYX replied coldly, returning her look backslash can I have some time to think about it? Backslash Alice asked not knowing what to do backslash I will give you three days. After that my offer will be gone forever. Backslash NYX asked snapping her fingers, returning Alice to her bedroom in the Astala estate backslash goodness girl you scared the shit out of me? Backslash one of the maids said putting a hand on her chest trying to calm down backslash I am sorry backslash Alice said now in front of God in the same room she was in when she was dreaming backslash what did that bitch tell you? Backslash God said, clearly annoyed backslash can you two maybe ask me before just pulling me all around the place I am actually starting to wonder if I am just dreaming. Backslash Alice said, annoyed herself not even knowing how much time has passed since she tried leaving Yumi's room backslash excuse me, you should be thankful I am letting you meet me in the flesh. Now tell me, backslash God replied angrily, losing his patience with Alice backslash she wants me to be her apostle and said if I agree she will transfer enough power to you to restart the angelic race, I won't have to kill anyone, I can live my life freely, backslash Alice said, overwhelmed backslash ha 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 ha, you would believe that evil bitch, backslash God said with a chuckle backslash and why shouldn't she, at least I am not using her for my petty revenge, backslash NYX said, stepping out of a black mist next to her backslash insolence. You dare step foot in my domain? Backslash God said so angry the sky above them turned grey backslash so barbaric, I swear you have always been this way. Do you even plan to tell her the truth? Backslash NYX said overpowering the drained God with her own pressure making Alice feel like she was about to burst into thin air. Falling under the intense pleasure she looked up and met NYX's eyes once more causing NYX to draw back her power. Backslash I am sorry about that Alice I just got so annoyed at Mr. High and Mighty here. We are all going to have a chat now so bring out some chairs for us. Backslash NYX now glaring at God who reluctantly did as she said backslash she has no right to know the business of God's NYX. If the other gods saw this we would become outcasts and hunted by the others. 
Backslash God replied trying to bite his tongue from saying too much in front of Alice backslash let them come then. She is the first demigod in Aeon and you would have her believe she is just a lowly human that you chose who is the one with nerves here? Backslash NYX replied backslash what demigod? Backslash Alice asked puzzled. Backslash it is time your father and I finally told you who you are. Backslash NYX said, causing God to slam his fists down on the table in anger. Backslash NYX watch your tongue? Backslash backslash that isn't possible my father and mother are angels. I am an angel. You are mistaken. Backslash Alice said, trying to keep her sanity backslash this is your father's fault he wanted revenge for what happened to his creations so he implanted the memories of one of his creations in your mind to have you do his bidding since gods cannot directly kill another god's creation. Backslash NYX said grabbing onto one of Alice's hands backslash that. Can't. No I have parents and neither of you are them? Backslash Alice yelled now holding back tears as she felt the world crashing around her backslash I should kill you for doing this to our daughter. You're no better than your shit creations. Backslash NYX said, grabbing Alice and taking her back to her room. Backslash listen Alice, everything I said is true. That is why I offered you a peaceful life away from your father's desires and take all of the time you need to think. If you ever wish to speak with me just think of the room I took you to next time you go into the shadows and you can meet me there. Try your best to live your life how you want to live it. I will always be here for you. I just can't play as an actor in your father's play anymore. Backslash NYX said, wiping a tear from her eyes as she vanished without a trace.